his core. All right, hello and welcome to Core, uh, the show about video games we think. Uh, who is this voice you're hearing? It's Bo. Uh, you, you know me, and I'm here with John, but no Scott. Scott is out because he has been officially diagnosed with laser shits. Uh, not just shit, it's shit in laser form, like how Li Ming shoots out, you know, her disintegrate laser. It is a fine point that can pierce uh, gyp rock and 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 the uh, car coverings what's the stuff on cars called <laughs> car metal <laughs> car metal yeah <laughs> it, can, it can pierce it, it shits so fine and concentrated it can uh, destroy the sun itself <laughs> Just a mirror. Uh, so we're he's let us out uh, in particular me usually john takes care of these episodes but i'm in the driver's seat today and hopefully we don't wreck the car uh, that's already been lasered uh, by shit laser um all right uh what else happens at the start we just say hey what's going on jump right in i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. usually you start with a fun anecdote usually um, my job you know. is to interrupt scott as soon as humanly possible <laughs> whatever intro he's done that's kind of how i that's kind of always my straight don't tell scott by the way um but uh i guess i'll be shooting a cold open out to you john yeah the steam summer Just sale shoot it right into the car metal man yeah uh, the steam steam summer sale is like last well i guess it goes to july 13th why did i think today was the last day oh because the deals i were watching ended on the 6th but uh, I want to know, uh, just compare shopping bags. Have you impulse bought anything? What's uh... I have, I so I have no money, but I do have a cart. <laughs> Don't let that stop I, you from for the when I do sale. have. Oh no, my cart's empty. Oh, I'm sh- not gonna remember what I wanted. Did Why'd you... they empty my cart? Maybe someone oh, else man. came in and gave you a hand with that. Like <laughs> I, I, I wish, I wish it's not gonna be the case. Um, I can tell you, Dave the Diver big on my list uh i want to get um octopass traveler 2 that's yeah. going to be one that i want to pick up as well uh i think fabled them which was one of the uh early access demos i played last time uh is on my list of games i want to play so i had about five or six games um which was equating to a, a decent little chunk of money but, uh, you know, not bad for uh, being all on sale. I think Triangle Strategy might have been in there. Um, there were a few of them. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I haven't bought anything. But apparently now i got to put the whole friggin' list together again. So sad about this. Um, you, you didn't put it on ma- your wish list? It is on my wish list, but my wish list is really big. And yeah. this, was, this, was, this was like, a, as soon as I have money to spend, I'm buying this cart. Right. Uh, I understand the, cart, that, the cart's yeah. gone. Because I had to prune yeah. the wish list because when the whole store was on the wish list, I'm like, what's the point of a wish list? <laughs> like, yeah. Everything we do a show every week, I'm constantly adding things because Scott says that a lot of games are great and I add them, but I'm like, well, I can't buy and play all these. I have 39 items anything? on my wish list. I did. Okay. Wow, that's not bad. The wish list is okay. nice though because you can sort by discount. Like that's the feature I really like. So I have yeah. my. I'll tell you what I have my eyes on. It's weird. I bought um, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Nice. Because I played it a bit on Game Pass, and I, you know, I've been playing a ton of Diablo, and I'm, you know, starting to get sick, sick of it. <laughs> I'm start, oh, I'm really? Start, I'm start, <laughs> I still you, like it a lot, but I'm starting. You don't say. I was playing. I'm like, I need to play a different game. I think, and I, uh, for some reason, Yakuza keeps coming up, uh, and I was like, you know, which Yakuza game? And I'm like, Like a Dragon's pretty awesome, so I bought it. Um, nice. So I don't know if I'll play it right away, but I now own it. So, yeah. And then the other one, this is a weird one that's on my list, but um, Planet Coaster is on no, sale. That seems cool. That seems cool. It seems yeah. on, it's on sale for 15 It's not normally a kind of game I play, but I I just happened to cruise by it and check it out, and it looked it looked neat. <laughs> it's like, okay. like So I'm watching that one. It's 15 bucks, and it's usually like a full 60 for me. So that's a good deal. And the other one I've got my eye on is... Uh, 
the Persona 5. Well, Strikers is on for a good sale. And Royal's on sale too, but not for that much. But I kind of... I don't have time to play Persona. It seems like a long game, but it's, you know, it's an overwhelmingly positive franchise. I like anime. It, you know, like I could, this is a, yeah. this is a fine t- taste. I could see myself drinking. Uh, I just, I just don't want to buy it and not play it, but yeah, I'm kind of interested in checking out Persona, but Baldur's Gate's think- coming soon. And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, was it, you like them? Approved? John approved? Oh yeah, yeah. Dredge was another one that I was really looking at. Scott talked a lot about Dredge. Yeah, yeah I heard uh, a lot about Dredge that. looked really good. Halls of Torment was also on there. That's the Diablo Survivors, which is four bucks. <laughs> like it's not like it was expensive to begin with, but at four bucks. Yeah, it's not even. Like, oh, it can... is on sale. It's, it's on sale for a dollar and thirty cents off. Yeah. <laughs> so. Huh. Uh, might give that a go. Um, yeah, there's just a, there's a decent chunk of games on there that it's like, yeah, let's let's think about it while uh, while it's cheap. Okay, well, uh, chat room, you know, you should you guys let us know if you're uh, picked up anything for the Steam sale. Write us in one eight hundred Corhams at gmail dot com. What's our what's our what's our email? What's our email? <laughs> Uh, write to us at uh, core hams it's at the bottom it's talk to the core at gmail.com there you go and yeah. then it's uh 801-471-0462 i hope that number is the right one yeah um, 10 terrible. core hams 1-800-10 oh, hams <laughs> <That also works. laughs> uh, okay um and i have one more sort of cold open topic just because i don't think we need to talk about it extensively but i guess we all made threads account yesterday Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I mean, like, the nice thing about threads is uh, kind of just sort of makes itself for you, but it, I mean, you have to lock it in, but you, because it's tied to Instagram, you technically I mean, already I have st- one. I still feel like a peon between two Superman villains, but, <laughs> you know, but uh, it is yeah. a, it is refreshing how clean the experience is versus Twitter. Like, it's just profile suggested. Like, it's nothing... It's just clean and breathable. The only thing I don't like is the For You pages. Ellen DeGeneres and Drake. Everyone's posting pictures of Drake. I'm like, I didn't follow any of these accounts. What am I seeing this? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's kind of my my take on it, too. Like, I get, you know, I, I, I don't think I like Elon Musk very much. Don't know him personally, but I yeah, no, can say that he has not helped my enjoyment of a platform that he owns very, very much. Hasn't done a lot for me in that regard. But uh, I don't like this mentality that we seem to have these days, which is when you decide you don't like a person, thus everything that person ever does has to be bad, mm. um, which is a weird trend that I have I've seen where it's like, you know, you either if it's something that's so obviously good, you just ignore it and pretend it didn't happen. If you can find any part about it to complain about, you do. I, I don't think that. I think people should be judged on what they do, and he probably has plenty of things you can criticize, but I don't think that means everything should be bad. And so seeing people jump into threads and, like, weirdly celebrate Mark Zuckerberg just because they don't like Elon Musk is a little weird to me, and seeing that was a little odd, especially because threads, while I think it has potential, um, and I think it's probably the strongest contender for a competitor to Twitter, um... By its initial launch, the way it works, a lot of the things it does are things people were pissed at Twitter for doing. So, like, your main feed still prominently features a bunch of people you don't follow. And, and all unlike check marks Twitter, too. It's like the yeah. same problem, except instead of, like, um, I don't want to say nobody, but really it's, like, nobody. Check marks of non-fit celebrities. It's celebrity check marks. And I'm like, I don't want to follow these douchebags either. Right. So, I, and people are like, yes, finally, a good place. And it's like, no, it isn't. It needs work. All of these still need work. So, um, I, I think that it's, I, I don't think that it is necessarily a great situation to immediately transition to. I think it has the best chance so far. I think Blue Sky is probably a better looking better operating platform but is going a little too slow for people to be able to be on the platform and use it and all of that uh i think hive 
unfortunately really hit at a point where people were kind of mad. Kind of mad enough to try something else out, but not mad enough to really do anything about it. Their so it's like, I'll was install not... this app and create an account. Their app was That's not it. smooth. It was not a smooth, like... Oh, nothing... yeah, it was It was a little dodgy at launch, yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah. I, think so... the, I think the issue is it's capital and hype building. Like, I just think if you have a low rent thing, you you don't have those promoters who are, have financial yeah. interests. That's, but And then they just can't help but want to get between you and your follows. Because there's, like... It's just, it's like mind blowing. Like I am picking my own follows. I do not need any help. If I follow people, I'm, I'm, I'm at the buffet. It's basically like if you go to Chinese buffet and pick your food and then one of the staff comes out and, and is like, oh, I think you want wontons on here. And these like are verified chicken balls. Like you're going to put, we're going to put, you're going to eat some chicken balls on your plate. And you're like, I don't want that. I, I, I didn't pick it. Don't put it on my plate. Why do I? They're like, you have to eat it if you want to eat here um that's how i feel about it. like just they just can't help themselves there's just too much money yeah. behind behind doing that and it, it's too bad i just don't i i because then it, you have to have hype like people have to want to go to those things so it's, it's not like you can make like a free public one and everyone's gonna be like it's so awesome because mr beast has got a million dollars to advertise some other platform so anyway yeah, but I, i'm on threads uh... anyways because as much as i hate it that's how we bring our cows to market right um is well, you know, I mean, it's like I said, I have no problem going to where the cool party is. Yeah. Been in that situation, you're at the lame party, you hear about the cool party, you're like, all right, I'll go hang out at the cool party. But I'm not going to be the person who finds the cool party. I don't want to be the trailblazer, <laughs> so I make the account. I'll When we all go over there and we all decide where it's going to be, I'll be there. But I'm, I don't want the job of trying to find it. I don't need to be a social media trendsetter. So once everybody else decides where they want to be, I'll go there. I've been that before. I remember it was the weirdest feeling when I was on this new thing that nobody had heard of, Twitter, and everybody else was talking about Facebook. And I was like, guys, you got to get off Facebook. Facebook is lame. This Twitter's the new thing. And this, people yeah. are like, I don't even know what that is. And I was like... You'll see one day I was sitting there with my three followers. I'm like, we know <laughs> the four of us know what's going on. Um, I don't need to be that anymore. That that's not fun. Those um, days of, of being cool and, and knowing what the latest uh, thing is, they're behind. <laughs> yeah, you that's now. for that's for other people. That's for people with more patience than me. So I'll just go when everybody else figures it out. You all figure it out and I'll go there. Although what I really want, I'll tell you the one that I, I mean, I don't have control because I'm not going to be an influencer. I already just said it, but I need somebody to have a good, like browser based platform, like tweet deck. Cause they're ruining tweet deck. It's going away. And I have discovered that like 90% of my Twitter use is via tweet deck. I don't really like the phone app. I definitely don't like the default web page. And so until somebody comes up with a good like web application version of whatever the new thing is, there's no way that I'm going to be using it. So, uh, or at least not using it very much, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, WinApp or uh, Win WinApp. Tweet deck. Winamp. Winamp. Tweet. Sorry, I have Winamp in, up in front of me. <laughs> Why do you have Winamp in front of you? Oh, I still rock Winamp. Is that like? Does that make me like super boomer? <laughs> no, no, that makes you. Uh, it really whips that's the llama's cool, ass. Yeah. Do you have a cool skin that makes it look like it's all radioactive? No, no, I use the default skin. Like I'm. Oh, but like right. I've been using Winamp since like the early 2000s. It's the most like geriatric thing I, I have on my computer in terms of map. It's still around. It's still free. Um, it's just I just like how small and. How you know it's not trying to sell me anything or do anything, you know, Spotify sucks. Um but <laughs> Chad says Winamp is the vinyl of MP3 players. Yeah. So I was like, I meant uh, sorry, because I was just like you know, I'm doing show stuff, guys. So I'm trying to concentrate on the conversation, but I got a little flustered and said Winamp. But I've never really been one to use Tweet Deck. Like I tried it for a little bit, but it just it looks like to me, maybe it was the way I had it set up, but like it's like if you barf, but barfs, your barf was all tweets. <laughs> That's what I yeah. like. It's just, it's just yeah. a mess of like messages. I, mean, I, I could see if I was a professional social media person, why it would be a good tool. 
but I can't, I can't do it. I can't follow it, man. It's too hard. Um, I, what I did, cause I felt the same way when I first got on it, I got on it. I removed all the extra stuff Yeah. and got it down to where it was just like, now it's ugly Twitter. That's okay. basically what I turned it into. Yeah. And then I just started going, okay, what do I want? Okay, I want to be able to just quickly see things that people say to me. So I'll make a column for that. Okay, I want to see anything that people say about There Will Be Dungeons. There Will Be Dungeons was the big like thing that got me into TweetDeck because we didn't have access to that account. Um, so if people wanted to tag that account, I wouldn't see it. Uh, unless I search for it. So having a dedicated window that just pulled up anything that went at There Will Be Dungeons was really nice. So I just had that all the time. Yeah, uh, I so just I, I just searched the term manually like a like a <laughs> like, know, well, like, like a, a prehistoric like, human like core like 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 user man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds way more convenient. Yeah, I know. And I did that for There Will Be Dungeons recently because I haven't done it for a while because we're not doing There Will Be Dungeons. But I just had to share this because mostly i you know i've gotten like criticism or like feedback but mostly it's all positive but one guy with one follower not connected to the community whatsoever like really like just shit on me so hard. I, saw, I saw that you, oh you saw that tweet i, I, I made me it, laugh yeah. I, but I, like it sticks in your head because that's what criticism does like you get 100 compliments and one diss like well echo through your head but i thought it was really funny just how like he was like this dm is just so fucking terrible ah! <laughs> I, was like, I was like holy shit i maybe don't listen to the show i don't know he really had but comments. also clearly listened to the whole thing like that was the other thing is like yeah so angry so irate listened to the entire show which was no small commitment and it's not to like um, follow shame because like that's stupid but like it's also just that he was posting i he think he has one follower like i just and he has barely any tweets but that was one of those i was like you know as i'm not matthew mercer so like you're i don't well like i don't see it that way i don't think you see yourself becoming more popular like like i for example the d4 diablo thing i was the, the reaction to that was like really big so I, that probably happens to a lot of people who get you know Matthew, Matthew Mercer's level where you still feel like you're just a dude right but I don't I don't have that kind of feedback so anyways it was just really funny how hard he was laying into me like I, was I, like, think I have feelings bro in, in trouble I think that's why we live in such an age of people having to do oops sorry's is because uh, I think I think people think of themselves as just like the nerdy kid in school, you know, struggling to make friends, struggling to have a community. And all of a sudden someone starts to get popular and all of a sudden, you know, they don't realize that they're not that anymore. Not that it excuses behavior. I'm not trying to make excuses for people, but, um, you know, yeah, but I before the internet, if you wanted to like hang out at Blockbuster and be like, Tom Cruise is the worst actor in the world. He sucks balls. There was no on the record of that. Like, no one cares about your conversation. But you <laughs> yeah, post it on social media and it goes viral and all of a sudden you're getting shamed for your dumb comments because, you know, you're just, you're, you're approaching Twitter or whatever with that same casualness as you would in 1995, you know, <laughs> where you're just like, yeah. you, could, you could talk all kinds of shit and no one, it's never going to, it's never going to matter to anybody except the friends and they probably are like, ah, ha, ha, you know, it's a private conversation. Social media is a nonstop effect of, I, I was over at my grandparents' house when I was a little kid and my grandma had a collection of crystal animals, like little crystal sculptures in the shape of animals. And I commented that I thought they were really, really neat and I liked them. And for every holiday, birthday, whatever, for the next several <laughs> years, I got crystal animals that I didn't really want to own. Oh, no. I just always got them because of one comment. And you can't and turn around and say... social media I... is just that. Yeah, you, you can't turn around and say I hate them, too, in that scenario, because then she already got... <laughs> you mean you hate the ones I gave you now, too? So, like, how do you... You can't extricate yourself. You just have to live with that, man. Yeah, yeah, that's just the thing. That, that is social media in a nutshell when you sort of paint yourself in a corner uh, somehow. And it matters, you know, if it affects you in that way. But anyways, threads. 
it's it's a thing check out our threads i think like everyone was on there instantaneously i did not see that kind of reaction on hive but i think people use instagram already and i can't judge too harshly because i am a quest user valve knows everything i do in my vr quest headset <laughs> mark mark's got a full file on me and my vr headset use uh the poor man but um yeah so you know i can't i can't i'm only bummed my... i i didn't get a screen name that i like like part of jumping on all of these and just holding the name is i've been able to get john jagger on most of them but because this one was tied to instagram which everyone has had forever and i'm late to the party on uh, I changed mine. I was Revendon on Instagram. Now I'm at least Craftless Rogue, so it's tied to my you picked a good YouTube handle. and all that. Yeah. But I was so mad, like, John Jagger was gone. I was like, well, I'll, I'll get John underscore Jagger, surely, and then no. So I'm I got like, stuck with an underscore. Are gone. I got stuck oh, with an underscore. I don't yeah. ha I'm usually a non-underscore, but there's a few other Bo Schwartzes out there. In particular, there's a... There's a like a nice uh the jewish family out in texas and he's a used car dealer i may have stalked his facebook page and stuff you know <laughs> <laughs> he's a used and and because he's competing with me on google rankings and i search myself and I'm like how am i doing on google because i have a pretty unique name so my odds of <laughs> jumping up are higher than the average person's name um and it's always that guy and that do. that guy is like trying to also get high in the rankings because he's used car salesman you know he wants people to google bo schwartz to get a used car in texas yeah. and, and i'm always like mm, mm. you know i'm i'm like i'm like i gotta post i gotta post more <laughs> so that i push his stuff down <laughs> on the search rankings so yeah yeah, for most like Scott John Johnson has to compete with like other Scott Johnsons, <laughs> like it's, a billion it's, people. It's not a close battle, so you, you'd be forgiven for not paying attention to it because whatever. But like, I'm like, there's like four Bo Schwartzes. I think there's also a young kid in California who has pretty bad potty mouth. <laughs> and, oh no! <laughs> but whatever. But I'm just like, you know, I compete with a few people for my name, and yeah, it's it's almost like the Council of Ricks or something. Like all the Bo Schwartzes our rivals but also the, yeah, we have the same, same name it's like my name is not that uncommon given that german is schwartz for black and black is like a common you know last name there's nothing uncommon about that but the bow makes it a little unusual but it's not that unusual of a name there are actually lots of bows out there too i think even it, brian ibbett was doing a pokemon show with a bow for a little oh, while. oh really yeah when the, when you no not wait what chat room what was it he was doing a show with uh, a guy named Bo about Pokemon Go, I think it was. I think so. Yeah. For a little while. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, there's another Bo. Anyways. Uh, threads. Sign up today. Video games. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so now I'm going to use Wood to play a little sound that John, you're not going to hear because we're on to oh, the okay. main topic. There you go. It was done. It's the oh, old wow, transition. That was a real quick sound. Yeah, it's Man. just it's just the band. Oh shit! I have looping on to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Scott, Scott's not here. Blame him. Um, uh, all right. So our main topic this week is D four season details were announced as of a few hours ago, and we get to talk about the D four statue update as well. So which do you want to do first, statue or season one? I mean, let's let's get the statue out of the way. You can finally rest easy. You can finally breathe a sigh of relief, uh, unless, well, we'll get to it. But uh, pretty secure in your spot, because it looks like they also put it, at least intended, in order that people achieved it. Uh, if I'm looking at that correctly, and I think you were at, what, 316, 360, something like that? Yeah, three list. three sixty. Someone counted. <laughs> Someone count. I was like, you know, there's that part of you where it's like, it's great to make the list, but man, I'm on page eight, and I'm I'm like, it would be great to be on page one, but whatever. I mean, I almost killed myself doing it. I don't think I could have gotten any done any better. Some information had I known would have sped up for sure, and also I had an item that wasn't, but that was turned off. A very important thirty yeah. x multiplier on damage that. The developers just turned off because it was bugged and I didn't read a forum post, so I didn't know and that I'm, things might have gone faster. But yeah, I was 316th, according to some people who counted, and my name's on the PDF. And uh, 
I have less. I had, I didn't have a lot of stress, but I had a little stress. I wanted. I wanted confirmed, and they really took. Yeah. The, it really was three weeks or so. <laughs> Two or three weeks. It felt like forever. So. Yeah. You made it. You I did made it. it. You're gonna be on the statue. I have a feeling. They haven't raved upon Lilith's bosom. Look, I have a feeling because they haven't reached out. I looked at that list and it just says Gorath hashtag one seven eight three or something like that i think is my battle yeah, yeah if it just says that the, i kind of want my name on there you know what i'm like you know like when you see st- memorials of people who died in a war you know it's like clive owens fought at the battle of football hill <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> clive, owens. clive owens the battle of football yep yeah. I remember you know it. I remember you know it like it was yesterday you go to like uh visit cities and you see statues and like here lies the fallen or whatever like i kind of i mean you did you see some of the usernames someone there was yeah, someone called yeah. a big hairy baby and someone tweeted me like is this your account you made it congratulations and i was like <laughs> i was like no i'm gorath that's what i mean like, i'm just like I kind of want my name on there, you know? It's just, it represents an extra barrier of... Translation? I don't know. I don't know if you call it achievement or whatever, but, you know, in your head, you want you to be the person who achieved that. Now it has to be you via Gorath, da-da-da. So if you ever show anybody... You have it's not as easy as to be like, hey, see that statue? My name's on that statue. It's hey, see that statue? My battle tag, which represents me and my like, I, I got a screen. I got a screenshot my battle net every time there's a challenge to it. Right? Oh, here, let me put yeah. my phone. Take a screenshot. Send it. I own this account. I can log into it. It's like, oh, you must have bought your account. You know, but I didn't. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm on the statue. Hooray. So I'm still looking forward to I wonder what they're going to do to show off. Like, I want some pictures. You know? I, I don't know if I'm going to make it to BlizzCon. And even if I go to BlizzCon, I'm not going to campus. So kind of going to BlizzCon doesn't matter. I need to find a way to get onto campus and snag a photo. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But I have to get my passport. It expired during the pandemic, and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> this endeavor is turning into a lot of steps. So, oh my god! But uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, congratulations. I, we already knew you did it, but um, as it turns out, there were some people that definitely thought they made it. That it seems like maybe are not on the statue. So you saw some of the controversy. I know. I, I watched the Asmund Gold video. Yeah, I saw his tweet, which led me to look into it, and sure enough, you can find on the uh, replies to the statue comment, uh, a lot of people claiming that they hit the mark within the time frame, uh, including some people that were like, we did it as a group, all of my group members are on there, (laughs) and I'm not. So, clearly, it wasn't something I did. And uh, there has been no word as of yet as to why these people were excluded. There's been a lot of speculation. I haven't seen any of that speculation confirmed. It's a lot of people just, I think, independently assuming. Armchair Um, investigators, as we're about, or I'm about to do in a second. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Like, well, was it this? Did they do this? Did they do this? Like, it's hard to say. I, I really would like for the Diablo team to to say something about it because it, it certainly looks bad, um, especially I guess there was one person who said they had actually heard back from someone at Blizzard saying that they were in and then were not in. So uh, that is scary, but that's why I think your position on the statue is actually really good because even if they have to do some change up, which is going to look very bad if they need to do that, because man... Wouldn't that suck? You're, you know, level, you're 1,000 on the statue or 998. And they go, whoops. Turns out you were actually the 1,005th person to achieve it. You're not going to be on the statue. Yeah, I'm not going to get bumped off if there's corrections. Like, I know I'm very confident. You've got room to flow. Yeah, uh, I was. Either way. I was neck and neck with Quinn69 for most of until he died. And he's like a big. ARPG player. So I was yeah. neck and neck with him and like train wrecks, I think made it the day before. So I post, I, I was aware I, I was one of the first people to post on Twitter because of like all the attention it got to. Like, I think I, I, like, you know, you can chronologically sort, there weren't a lot prior to me. 
Um, so I, I feel good about that. I won't get knocked off. Yeah, I, 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 it was a solid finish. Sense. It was a solid finish for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you weren't in under the wire. No. So I think you're safe, but I, I'll tell you, um, you know, I, I do not want this to sound like I'm trying to take away from your achievement because it is not a criticism of the achievement. I think that should have happened. I think it should be celebrated and all of that. But Blizzard, you really got to get your shit together, guys. Like, I feel like somebody thought of this as like, oh, wouldn't this be a cool thing? We'll figure it out. Just, just tell people we'll do it. It does not feel like they had a good plan. I feel like maybe some of that Megan Fox money should have been spent into coming up with a better way to track, promote, and make a big deal out of these this race. Because to me, that was the coolest part. I didn't care so much about the people dying. I cared more about, like, oh, what, what number is Bo going to be? When is When are people going to get in there? And I understand, you know, like, to a degree. Sorry for saying it this way, Bo. I had a horse in the race. Like, I had a person to root for. And yeah. You're you know, calling support, me a horse? So what? I, I'm maybe a little more into it than most people. But I think even you probably saw this from your experience. A lot of people wanted to know where you were. Where was it still going? What was the status of it? Like people were cheering along with you, and I think it really sucks that Blizzard didn't facilitate that on their end. It's like they just didn't think people would care, or they didn't put enough resources behind it. And now getting to this point where you've got people saying like, "Hey, I should have been there. I have evidence that I should have been there, and I'm not," um, and them not having a quick answer for that, I think is really embarrassing too. You know. So I, I think they need to figure this out. They need to, they need to get out in front of it, I'll, and hopefully they don't just ignore it, which seems to be what they've done so far. Yeah, no, I, I think... Uh, oh, I don't think they're going to do quite as much of a crazy plan for the season, though, the season leaderboard. So... Um, I think with this one... Uh, it could have it definitely could have been handled better, but like I, my name's on there, so I don't care about anything else. <laughs> as long as they get, as long as it makes it uh, there, I don't know. It sucks that the people who got uh, shafted potentially. The one thing I had in my mind about why they got shafted is they may be on a naughty list. They may be in Blizzard jail about the people who didn't make yeah. it. So I saw like, oh, maybe uh, they were disorganized, which is sort of like you know get your shit together kind of thing, um, but. The other as the other aspect was just like the, the like what if they're like on a shitter you know sometimes you, you know you never know what people get up to maybe they actually did some they have some really shitty stuff in their chat history or something that they're like on a watch list in internally and they're like we can't give this guy a name on the statue and we can't tell the public why we're not going to do it because libel's a thing and they're streaming and being public so their name's just not going on the list and we're not going to say anything because maybe the lawyers are like, don't say anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah. I, I think even, I think they have to at least get in there though. And they have to at least say something to the effect of we're aware, you know, and that there was a reason that these people were excluded and, and that's it. You got to say something like, it looks extremely bad for them as a company to have this big competition, this thing that people wanted, and to have people come to a degree with receipts saying, look, I should be on there, and then leave it up to public speculation as to why Blizzard is, you know, potentially screwing these people out of their position on there. Um, and again, like, imagine if you weren't, you know, in the 300s for your rank, Imagine if you were sitting at like 998th and this news story breaks where people are saying like, hey, we should have been on that list. Like even the people that are now on the statue that got the relief of like, oh, I made it. Now they have to sit there and wait too. So it's bad for the people that say like, hey, I should be on this list. But it's also bad for the people that are on the list low going, well, wait a minute. 
Should they be on the list higher than me? Am I about to get kicked off and lose my position on here? Yeah, it's gonna um, it's gonna suck big time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, it, as far as I know, it wasn't that many people. Like, I don't know if it's. Do you know if it's become a meme yet, where everyone's like, "I should have been on the list. Why wasn't it?" I think it's like a handful, right? Like maybe no more than five or six. I, yeah, I haven't seen. I I think I've only seen three or four. Like um, probably anyone that seemed three or four that seemed legit. I have seen other people where I think maybe they were just saying it, you know, like, I feel like if you but, have stream proof, uh, you know, then that's one thing, but I don't think they're going to hear all the cases of every random, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, but yeah, the public ones, maybe they'll address. It's sort of gotten some attention, but you're right. They should like, you know, figure their shit out for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, um, it's uh it's yeah I, I, blizzard is is constantly getting farmed for their controversies and so it's just another week in blizzard land that i feel like <laughs> you're right that it could have been better organized there could have been a like i like i even said while i was doing it like just some confirmation on on where i'm at would be great that would help yeah. me um know if i'm killing myself for nothing or not but Oh, well, I mean, you uh, in an ideal world and if they couldn't have done it, like, that's fine. But like, to me, it, this felt cool. And you would have liked to have seen a big tweet go out saying was the first to achieve it. And then, you know, maybe follow up tweets were like, here's 10 more people that did it and like make a big deal out of it. And instead, we just got you know, Megan Fox mocking people for dying, which was a funny bit. Like, I'm, I don't want to say, you know, they can't do that, but like that feels like empty calories. Whereas the other actually feels like a bit of meat, like to celebrate the game and get excited for the people playing it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's my, that's my thought on it all. But, uh, Let's talk about season one. Did you watch the uh, Did you watch the stream on it? I didn't get a chance to finish it. Um, it was during my work day, so like I tried to power through. But it's a pretty, it's a good vibe. But they take a long time to communicate information during during it. But I have the wowhead. I looked at the wowhead notes, so uh, I did watch the trailer, and I have a sense of what the theme is, um, which is uh, it's called the season of the malignant. Yeah. And um, so this is where we get to assess whether, and I'm more interested to hear from you as someone playing tons of D4, I'm obviously going to play it, but I want to know the enticement level for you. But basically, um, uh, the patch will be downloaded on the 18th. It releases July 20th, which I think is a Thursday. And in this patch, there is a priest who's like, uh, man, these demons, they've got like some malignant shit in them. Their hearts are malignant. So as a player, you'll log in. Um, in addition, I think they're playing the campaign. That's part. What part I was not clear on, but there will be a new storyline. There will be a an NPC who starts storyline. I don't know how much they ended up revealing, but there will be new content involving this. And basically, you'll be um, farming these elites that have malignant hearts in them. You kill them once, then you got to kill them a second time, and then you get a heart, which is basically a gem uh, that you pop into your gem slots. And there are, uh, are colored gem slots, so different colored gems go with different colored gem slots in the items, which is very Path of Exile-ish. And these gems modify the abilities. And there was a quote that I saw uh, by a couple new sites quoted, and I heard it myself, which is like, hopefully not too broken builds. <laughs> like, because it's not going to PTR for testing or anything. Like, they're just launching the system's as it is so some really smart you know race guys gonna figure out the best combination of gems and get to level 120 minutes who knows oh there goes that but um <laughs> that's a, i knocked my fan, fan down um yeah so that that's you know apparently there's a new boss new legendary aspects on um, gear new unique items great and the new quest line is helping the priest of cathedral delight i don't know we don't know how involved that quest line is. If it's going to be like a side quest or maybe like a few stages or a whole thing, tough to know. And Helltide and Nightmare reward, dungeon rewards are going to be increased. So, John. Yeah. How interested does that make you to return for some season one gameplay? Um, Kind of halfway there. Like, I'm going to try it. You know, we talked about this last week. I've 
I bought the expensive version of the game, which got me the accelerated battle pass. So there is a part of me that feels like, you know, I bought it. This is my time to use it. I should use it. Um, and then I can let that color my decision on if I'm going to buy into it ever again. Um, looking at it from a surface level, like when they break it down, um, I'm going to say that it wasn't very appealing at that point when I was just looking at it on a web page. Uh, I, I, there's something very difficult with season passes, and this is kind of true in general, when they really break down the rewards and what they're going to give you, where you look at it and you just go, that doesn't seem like very much. Um, it's a really hard thing to, to quantify in your head exactly how much more gameplay and all that is going to be. But I also feel like Diablo 4 was a good experience, but I got tired of it and it felt like it was missing stuff. Mm. By the time I got to the end game, it felt a little shallow, a little shallower than I would like, um, I, I guess is the way I would, I can I see would phrase that. it. I can see that. There isn't and much. Yeah, it's shallow. Like, so when they say, like, there's more legendaries and more uniques, I go, oh, great. That's what I want. But there's also that little like, kind of jaded part of my brain that goes, should have been in there. You know, like, why am I sitting here thinking this game's shallow? is because this stuff wasn't in there, and now they're putting it in there, which is good. I don't want to take away from it, but also, why wasn't it there to begin with? Yeah. Uh, is kind of is kind of what my brain says out says when I see it. Um, the part that got me excited, though, because like initially I was like, eh, I didn't think the armor looked very cool, looked very edge lord, like whatever. Um, so I, I was kind of like, Ugh, I'm not going to play it. But then I saw the quote about them saying, like, they want the seasonal content to feel a little more broken, a little more like you get to be just super powered and go crazy. And I went, well, that's what I wanted. That's the experience that I wanted. I wanted to build towards that and create a build that just, you know, like feels broken and feels insane. Uh, the base game... Uh, I guess they refer to them as the Eternal Realms, uh, felt really reined in, where it was like, yeah, you could do some crazy things, but it just never really felt good. Um, so seeing them say, like, we, we're okay with you breaking the game and, like, going crazy with this stuff, that, to me, is how Diablo should play. And so that was exciting to me. And that that made me hopeful enough to where I'm like, yeah, let me check it out. Let me see how it's how it's going to go. And if it ends up feeling great and feeling that way, then awesome. Bully to us. I'll probably be in for multiple seasons, whether it's every season or just check in every now and then. I don't know. But uh, if it doesn't feel that good, then that's probably going to be it for my time with Diablo 4 till they figure more stuff out. Like... I, I do think that there is a slow pacing to this that I'm concerned about. Because the other thing that you have to look at is they want seasons to be about six months, I think is what they said. Yeah. And you look at it and you go, all right, well, the Eternal Realms right now feels shallow. Season one, it's hard for me to say how much that getting added to the game is going to extend it and and push it out. There's still a lot of key features that are people asking for that aren't coming until season two, um, which is going to be, and I see, I see people saying three or six months, so, but regardless, like it's a, it's a chunk of time, a decent chunk of time. Um, you know, it, is this taking too long? Like is half a year too long for basic conveniences and stuff like that? And I don't know that it's going to hold me for that amount of time. We'll just have to see. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like this first season is kind of maybe even the first two. So I know because this is the answer Omega Nine X's comment in there. A lot of the major fixes aren't coming until season two because season one was pretty much gold um, at launch. Like. They put whatever fake hot fixes they can in, but the big the big stuff you can disagree or not, but the big stuff's coming in season two. What they consider to be big changes that need testing or whatever. And so I think, like to your point, John, it's like they definitely intentionally withheld content to deliver on seasons, right? Like I think if they yeah. weren't doing seasons, 
they might have justifiably had more. It definitely feels like half a game in a way. Like even though Helltides and Nightmare Dungeons are fun content, it's like, is it fun for 50 levels and it's the longest 50 levels? No. But the season's journey's coming back, so it might provide a nice framework of like even though it's like it's like very what I would call like low effort content, you know, like do this dungeon on this difficulty level, you know, just like how Diablo three did it. It still at least frames the sandbox like in a journey, like for things to do. It can help. Yeah. Like not that by itself. And that's what I was worried the most. I think for casual players, I think people are gonna who like the ARPG and are gonna play are just gonna play it until they get sick of coming back. But like the casuals don't even want to make a new character. We talked about that last week. So yeah. it really needs to have something interesting. And I'm I'm still not sure how interesting that sounds. Like you tell me there's gems that drop off malignant enemies and there's a little quest and that can range from like if I think of Diablo three, like pretty low effort, <laughs> you know, here's a zone, here's an NPC, here's twenty lines of dialogue. That's new content, you know, that's not gonna yeah. fly. I almost think like maybe not full uh, cinematics, but like machinima cutscenes, World of Warcraft style, like kicking some story down the road needs to be done. And if like that's the long term plan, John, I think we're gonna have a really great game in like three to four years. <laughs> You know, like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's like, kind of where I'm at. I'm like, boy, in a couple years, this game's gonna be real banger. Yeah, exactly. So, I, and, and knowing that, like, there's a ton of other games to play. Like I said, uh, I'm I'm glad it's July 20th for season one. It's gonna give me like a nice weekend to play the season and be like, goodbye, Diablo. <laughs> I'm out for Baldur's Gate. That is now my life until Starfield comes out, and then I'm doing Starfield. Please do not drop another season till I'm done with at least those two games. And then whatever uh, cyberpunk's uh, fucking deal. <laughs> Sorry, it's just like oh my, I'm so stressed. The number is of games there are. Phantom Liberty, I think that's what yeah. It is, Phantom right? Liberty, like I find it. I find the number of games I legit want to play now in the next like three to six months. It's like stressing me out a little bit because I still work a full time job and I want to play these things, and I'm like, uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff I want to get into. So. Yeah, but I think the season for me sounds interesting, so I'll probably be playing it on launch for sure. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I think ultimately I am going to check it out. You know, again, I'm already bought in. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, might, I might as well. Otherwise, I'm just kind of throwing that away. But uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I'm with you. I don't need to play Diablo 4. The reason it's frustrating for me is because I'm rooting for Diablo 4 to do well because I want more. And... We've seen what happens when Diablo doesn't get as well received as it should. And then you find out <laughs> down the line, like, oh, you missed an expansion that never came. And you go, well, I would have really liked that. So I want them to succeed. I want them to do well. I want them to make the game uh, as good as it can be because I want to keep playing it. Um, and I, I certainly want to see that storyline continue. They set up a lot of cool things. I would like to see those cool things. Some might say, I really wish it was in the damn game, mm -hmm. uh, but I got to wait for it. So I hope that it is successful in a world where I don't care about playing Diablo four is like my only game. And I've got so many other things to play. I'm kind of okay with the fact that I'm not that excited about seasons, but it does concern me because I want the game to do well, because I want them to keep making it. It just depends. People got to buy the battle passes if they want to support the game. That's, I I just I have this feeling people are not going to sell a lot of battle passes. I just got this I feeling. I kind of think that this and first one's going to be okay because a lot of people are in like yeah. me or have already paid, think, already bought it, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think I, season two is going to be the test, and you're going to have to sell it a lot better than here's a character you don't know. You're going to go on an adventure with it. I just also like, I just also <laughs> think, and this lame. could be totally wrong, but I just think like ARPG players, like the ones who play a lot of them, are like. A lot of them are like kind of elitist, not in a bad, not in a terrible way, but just, you know, like Path of it. which one's a better one, which one's the more efficient and definitely like cheap. Like, you know, there's like esports stuff where people, you see like people will plunk down money. Like I'll be like, yeah, it's worth it. Whatever. Like, let me do this. I, I just feel like I, I could be wrong, but just when you check out the streamers that are talking about it, like the community, they all get off on like 
maximizing value. I mean, that's what Diablo is, maximizing damage value and defense yeah. value. And that like extends to finances. These are not people that are like get off on the $200 they spent for conspicuous culture. And like a lot of the people in Diablo Immortal who spent, who literally spent like Quinn 69, I think famously spent like 10 grand or uh, tons of money. And still, I think he kept spending money until he got something rare out of something. And it's just like, that was meant to be a joke. Right. And like, I think the people who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get PVP gear to play at the top ladder of Diablo Immortal, I've seen their YouTube videos justifying it. I think, I think it's dumb. I, I don't care if you're a billionaire. Like it's just, even for a billionaire, it's dumb to blow money on this kind of stuff. It's just so dumb to me. And I think a lot of, I just, I don't picture a lot of big spender whales in Diablo four. It's just not a whale genre. I don't think yeah. I, I'd be curious to see if there are whales in path of exile or not, but I have a hard time imagining it, but we'll see. I don't know. I, it, it, at some point they're going to release something awesome in that store that I'm going to want to buy. I just have this feeling so far nothing so far everything's pretty pedestrian i'm like wow they really like they really haven't cranked it up at all <laughs> in the store. yeah like, i mean they they their store page has a like hey store's gonna refresh in 13 hours and i was like okay cool i'll check back and i did i was like let's just see let's just see what's gonna be in there and i couldn't tell if the store was actually updating because they've got such a small limited amount of items that basically the same things are in there all the time. And like occasionally something will drop off and something new will replace it. But there's nothing like they not only made a store that doesn't encourage you to spend money one, because it's so ridiculously expensive, but also, uh, you know, none of it is like power gains and stuff like that. Like Diablo Immortal had, that's what they said. That's what we wanted. But, like, they've also created a store that's so incredibly uninteresting that I have no interest in going and checking it. Like, I checked it the first couple days because it was like, yeah, let's see what items are in here. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything cool. And then I went, oh, I don't ever need to check this store. It's, like, usually the same exact items, and they're not that cool. And so and I'm going to throw that never question. Never looked at it ever again. I'm going to throw that question back to you. Would having a Mandalorian skin in the Diablo shop... <laughs> bring no. you in <laughs> no 100 no i wouldn't want it you don't I want a girl like, to you don't want a girl to rivia uh actually girl to rivia armor set if you didn't look like it but an armor set would fit that would actually be a yeah, okay that crossover in the universe yeah. yeah i mean you could do a version of the mandalorian too like mandalorian armor has a very medieval knight kind of look to yeah. it what but... about optimus prime uh no that wouldn't, <laughs> that wouldn't get me i mean i'm not saying they need to do a bunch of stuff but like it's just shocking how few items are in there like i think if they had it <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> oh my god i think if they had an optimus prime skin in diablo 4 i'd hate it and i'd still buy it and wear it I mean, it was fun it. in Diablo like... 3 to, you know, like, color code yourself in, like, interesting ways. Like, you know, I had Artanis armor in Diablo 3. I color coded myself yeah. to look like Artanis all the time. That was a, I that had, was a thing I had Mercy's just standard. I had Mercy's Overwatch wings in Diablo yeah. 3. Yeah, they had stupid items in Diablo 3. Um, hmm. Diablo 3, much more hmm. fun game than Diablo 4. Yeah. Um... Uh, it's just kind of it's just kind of <laughs> crazy what they were willing to do in there yeah well i think that's later in the uh the life cycle but i, I don't know man like i think the store the shop right now is pretty pretty um pretty relaxed they're, they're really not trying to make ripples with it because you don't hear a lot of criticism about it like it's like i think everyone feels so unaffected or pulled by buying things in there that it's not really a controversial thing except for maybe how expensive it is but We've got, no, I think Overwatch takes the brunt of that criticism, so not Diablo. But I just do think Diablo players, ARPG players, probably skew cheaper. I know Diablo Immortal flies in the face of that, but I think that's mainly for mobile gamers. Like, I hate to be the gatekeeper, but I don't think Air, I don't think any of the ARPG content creators like shit on Diablo Immortal. That's for like, that's for casuals i'm sorry to say <laughs> i i think the biggest issue with diablo store i mean like there is a big issue with it not being interesting but 
I think price is a huge thing that they need to overcome because um, there was a day where I was like, you know, the kind of style rogue that I play, I think this item would look really good. But I only really wanted one piece of the set, and the set was like $20 to get the whole set of gear, which I was like, absolutely not. There's no universe where I spend that. And it made me think, every time I go to the grocery store, um, my son gets at least one Hot Wheel car because his dad is a sucker and because Hot Wheel cars cost under a dollar at the grocery store. And you look at it and you're like, holy shit, I can make this kid's day for less than a dollar added to my grocery bill. Fantastic value. And one day, one of the ladies there uh, who was working there said, man, it used to be that those costs like $2.50. I don't know if that's true, but that's what the lady working there said. And she said, we never sold any of them. Like they just sat there. It was just mm. on the shelf. They dropped it to like 90 something cents or whatever dollar. And all of a sudden people are in here all the time buying all the Hot Wheels cars constantly. Adults, kids, everybody. And I feel like if you looked at that Diablo shop, as boring as it is, as basic as it is, and you could just buy things for like less than a dollar up to a dollar, maybe five dollars for like a big set, everybody would buy everything. Because people would want to fill out their transmog and they'd be like, for this? Yeah. Oh, I want this cool sword because it goes with the outfit I put together and that costs a dollar? Hell yes, I'll do it. Everybody would do it. Yeah, I'd probably but do Blizzard's it. gotta put it in a bundle that costs twenty dollars for Blizzard premium pricing, and it's it's like I, it immediately just made me go, all right, I don't have to do anything in this store. I don't have to worry about it. I, uh, this is not for me. Maybe they don't need it. Maybe maybe they're fine without those sales in this case. Uh, you know, but they just have to put it in there because the suits want it in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I just I don't know how those financial. I don't know. It could be like I just don't know how those financial decisions work. That's why I'm like box sales are great, but you know Square Enix can turn around, have great sales, and make a great game and consider it garbage. I, they want that that other revenue, man. I just I don't know, but RPG players they're cheap. I'm telling you. <laughs> Speaking as one, today. yeah, they will buy a thing or two, but I don't know, man. I just. I got a, I got a, a bad feeling for about mobile it. Game. it. Like there's a reason besides the fact that they're bad games, I try to stay away from mobile games. I am very susceptible to a lot of the predatory purchasing practices that these companies use. I haven't spent a dime extra on Diablo 4. Yes, I bought the expensive version of the game, but I knew I was going to play it. I knew I was going to do it. I knew I was going to do season 1. Like that was a given. I haven't spent a single penny extra. And not only that, I don't feel the pull to. And uh, if you can't get me, you're doing something wrong because I love to spend money because I spend money when I'm stressed and I'm stressed all the time these days. So uh, if I'm not interested, you are you are failing on some level because I would buy almost anything when I if I'm stressed out enough. Yeah, and I'm like, about to be the only person taking care of a baby for 10 days. So let me tell you, I am stressed out. Are you, you going to do a lot of uh, like handheld gaming though while you're doing the baby thing? Because you can't be at your PC as much? Like, I don't think so because I'm going to be so nervous that he's going to hurt himself. Like, I'm the worst helicopter parent in the planet mm, because mm. like, I know what happened because he early on uh, in his running around life, he took a header into a bar stool. And had to go to the ER, and that was just a normal day. And I saw how quickly that can your day can just turn and shift. And like, I didn't handle it well. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say I, yeah. I, I was not the adult in that situation. Thank God my wife was here because I didn't do, I didn't handle it well. Him getting injured. Oh, because you get scared and, so, and you get angry, and that gets misinterpreted as like. No, I wasn't mad. I just, oh. I just was scared. I was too scared to make like rational decisions. Oh, like and, freeze up a little bit. Yeah. Like I, I do okay in a lot of situations, but like I don't handle trauma particularly well. I remember when I was a kid, my dad uh, 
accidentally had the the top part of the the back part of the car. Well, I don't remember why I can't think of the word. He dropped it on his head, Spokes. and that little piece that hangs down that seals when you close like the back of the car. I don't want to say the trunk because it's not really a trunk in an SUV, but essentially the trunk, right? Okay, just like um, the flap, the SUV yeah. flap. Yeah, like the SUV <laughs> flap. I don't know what you call it. Is it called a trunk? If it's that big, whatever. The door came down the hatch. What? It hit him in the head. Um, next thing I know, I'm putting away groceries. And my dad comes around and he's bleeding profusely from the head. Ah. And my parents are like, we got to get to the hospital. We got to get your dad to the hospital. We got to get these groceries out of the car. He's, I'm just seeing blood pour out of his head. And in my like stunned, I don't know what to do or how to react state. I threw an entire bag of freezer groceries in the garbage can. Well, because our garbage can was right yeah. next to the freezer, and I just didn't know how to react, so I threw a whole bag of groceries away, got in the car, and we went to the hospital. And then when we got home, and my parents were like, "Where's all our frozen stuff?" I had to oh, figure it was not out frozen. Like, well, I I threw it in the garbage and so because it was melty. I panicked and yeah. didn't handle the situation well. I mean, it's and understandable. I'm terrified, I, I would do if there yeah. was a baby emergency by myself that I would I would make poor decisions or be incapable of functioning. I mean, so that, that, I am going to be extra helicoptery. I wouldn't beat yourself up too much about that because you were focused on the right thing. Like, you're someone's bleeding out. Like, who cares about the groceries? You can always buy new groceries. You know, like yeah. It's, I think you did okay. Like, I think that's, I understand what you mean though, about being nervous, but I think, I don't know. I think, you know, that sounds like you're focused on the right thing. Like, uh, dad's bleeding. Let's go. Like, who cares? Like you probably, should, <laughs> yeah, okay. you probably like if it was that, if away. it was that bad that it was like, go to the hospital, you probably should just check the groceries on the front lawn and go like groceries. You can get yeah. anytime. I, it's, that's the nature of our money world where you're like, I'm dying, but I don't want anyone to steal the food. It's the only food I can buy if I, in case I live, <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, yeah. it's just like, it shouldn't matter. And people shouldn't steal your shit. <laughs> and it should, you know, you should be able to go get medical help. So annoying. But uh, yeah, that it's funny. Cause you're that trauma. I don't, it's, I'm not trying to make this the trauma Olympics or anything, but it brought up a memory I had that similar, but worse yeah. <laughs> which which i met a i met a bus stop and there's a middle-aged guy there and then he starts spasming and smashing his head into the cement and he bled a lot too oh. and i don't I, to this day i don't know what it was like a stroke or a i don't know but like spasming involuntarily and he, i just remember him smashing his face into the cement not because he was like doing it like he had control it was like he was spasming and as a result like he, a seizure or yeah like a seizure and he was hitting his face in the cement and of course he was bleeding and his glasses were broken and i still think about that i was 35 years like i was a young lad and ha you know i still Jeez. think about it to this day and i'm like i hope i'm not that guy <laughs> you, know, like, you know what i mean <laughs> i think about it every day and i'm just like that looked terrible like i was just waiting for the bus having a normal i don't even know if he lived i have no idea but that it was awful so uh yeah it doesn't really relate to your story which is just acting cool in a tough situation but just the, <laughs> the bleeding head it reminds me of that i think about that a lot it's very disturbing yeah but um no i think you'll do fine it sounded like you're focused on the right thing so you know have a bit of cough i know it's tough what is it uh true test is one we're not prepared for right so you, you worry yeah. about those tests because you're like I suck. <laughs> like what? I don't please don't test me. But uh, yeah, that's what I want. I want to. I want ten days of zero testing. Like just <laughs> let's let's make it smooth. Let's uh, let's just keep it keep it easy. Keep it level. Also, while we're on the subject, uh, I won't be here next week. Everybody, you will enjoy a Scott and Bo show um, next yeah, week. Yeah, that's why we didn't push. So Scott has, yeah, because I guess we, we can move on to our weekend gaming. It's 8.30, so the show might end up being as long as every other show, even <laughs> even though we anticipated it would be shorter. We're still uh, haven't even gotten to our games yet. So I think that wraps it up for Diablo. Season 1's coming. You'll probably hear about it sooner because I, I have a ARPG syndrome. Um, but uh, now let's uh, go to our weekend gaming. Winamp sounds. <laughs> Winamp. <laughs> All right, so Scott, as, as this is what what I wanted to segue to. Scott has laser shits, as we mentioned at the top of the show. It's uh, it can pierce corduroy. So 
Watch it. Watch. Watch. And watch. Car metal. <laughs> and car metal. Uh, so we don't know what he's played, but I'm sure he'll catch us up next. Well, he'll catch me up next week. John won't be here next week, not because he's planning on getting the laser shits, but uh, because of what we just discussed. He's got a busy week of of adulting and child rearing. So yeah, there is yeah. a slim chance I'll be here. Uh, there's a better chance I might record something and send something in, but right. Um, you know, I I don't. I uh, is it my be turn doing yet? Very little next week. I think, is it my month this month for the? I have to check in on that too. I think I'm in September, right? I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's your month or August? Oh, I'll check with Scott. But uh, oh yeah, if you can record something, we do. I thought we could do a funny live on location, like you just like hang diapers off the ceiling and just be like, oh, "I'm dying, send help!" I just, <laughs> you know, just be buried fun. under Hot Wheels cars, yeah, and, uh, big blocks. <laughs> or you know, on a more positive side, you could just show you guys playing video games or something cool. Do a little report, yeah. eh, the report from yeah. the front line of child rearing. Fortnite's still a fun game. <laughs> um, he d- he doesn't like when people play Fortnite. He no. tries to sit behind them and kick them. He doesn't. Oh, doesn't appreciate okay. It. All right, kick them. <laughs> New definition to kicking someone off the video game. Yep. Um. All right. Anyway, Scott's not here, and yeah. So because we John can push to tomorrow, that's why we decided to go today. Uh. So yeah. Um. So games you've played this week, John. You're up. Let's hear. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear about Final Fantasy just from you while we have the opportunity. Because, again, I have a bit of FOMO on that game. And, um, you know, when you and Scott talk about it, it turns, you know, on the salacious combative issues, it turns to. But uh, now we get to have a little John unfiltered podium alone on Final Fantasy 16. So let's let's do the shit. Yeah, I'm approaching the end of Final Fantasy 16. Uh, I've streamed almost the entire game. I've taken a little bit of time here and there to do side quests off stream as just something so I can play it when I want to unwind and stuff like that. I have a couple things that I'm willing to do off stream, but as far as the main story, it has been uh, every bit of it has been streamed so far. And uh, I think I'm nearing the end. Um, it seems like there is going to be eight icons that you unlock. I've unlocked, uh, seven of them. So that gives me a pretty good idea of where I'm going to be with it. And, uh, man, despite, I stand by the things that were said last week. Uh, okay. and I think there is an interesting discussion about, you know, our tendency to say, uh, when something is from Japan, oh, it's anime as a go-to explanation for things that are just they're, they're just story beats but let me tell you i found the anime it's there uh it's undeniably there in a, in a couple of places i have found it um in the truest sense of the definition that game has some of the most bonkers insane crazy boss fights i have ever seen in the history of video gaming and, and you're talking like ev- act two, act three business now, right? Like we're well, we're not talking opening of the game. Like we're talking now that you see more of the game kind of thing. No, but it starts that way. Like that's the thing is the first really big boss that you fight uh, is Garuda. And when I fought Garuda, I remember thinking like, oh man, like this is, this is crazy big. This is, this is epic. I guess they wanted to start really big. And they just keep topping it. Like, every time it escalates, it just gets crazier and bigger. And I think I said it on stream when I said, this game makes looking cool seem so easy. Like, I've never seen a game that's just like, whatever, what if I was just the coolest thing you've ever seen in the history of video games? And it's just very casual about it. Uh how effortlessly cool this game can sometimes be i don't know if i've ever played a game that has just made me uh naturally not for the stream uh i do things for the stream i would have done this if i was by myself while i'm watching it just gone oh my god bad ass that's awesome and like cheer you know, I'll laugh if I'm by myself and you know, I games rarely make me cry on the immediate Usually it gets me after the fact when I think about it. Um, This game has gotten me to cheer multiple times. This game is so insanely 
big when it expands out. Is it does now, it is it get epic in the way like a Dragon Ball style like you know like everything is like plus plus every time there's like a stakes it's the stakes like double or get higher and crazier and crazier. Okay. You say anime is it do, like that? We're going to just here's here's a spoiler. Everybody yeah. just skip a, skip ahead of about a minute. There is a fight where you fight um Bahamut the dragon mm-hmm. as a, as a freet fused with the phoenix so he's like giga ifrit in oh. outer space oh nice they pull a gurun log on <laughs> so Did they throw planets at each other or anything like that like how we're how... not quite to planets yet but my god we're not far from it and i mean like that's the thing is final so, fantasy listen, has, if, has a if, long history of this if they if it so how far are you in the game like 80 percent? like you're not done yet, i right? think probably 80 percent. yeah would so, be they, a, so they haven't would started be so they haven't started throwing galaxy galaxies at each other yet but like if you tell me bo uh, I play the end, and at the end, you pick up planets and chuck them at each other. That's how huge you are. <laughs> I will buy it. I, I, I will have a hard time staying away. That, that shit is aw- like The idea that things keep getting more and more and more ridiculous is like one of the best anime tropes. Yeah, like you don't it you, has you don't that watch trope for sure. You don't watch Goodfellas and all of a sudden they're driving tanks and shooting airplanes at each other because the mafia gets so crazy that they got to do that, right? Like it's a staple of like anime of like a certain types of anime, and if this is one of those, then I like the sound of that. Yeah, I mean, like it does do that escalation, and now I'm getting into another one, and it feels like maybe it's raining it in a little bit. But like, <laughs> well, you just told chat when like, you were done even... with spoilers. I saw your chat like so. What Kissy Bears is in there is like a spoiler's done. You're like, yep. And here's another spoiler, guys. No, 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 no. This isn't a spoiler. I'm just oh, saying okay. like that it's rain. It seems like maybe it's pulling back a little, but like even their version of pulling back a little is still insanely big. Like, it's still, like, me going, like, oh, they've really pulled this back a little is still, like, what you would expect for a final boss from most video games. And you go, oh, all right. Now, Scott's criticisms are accurate. Like, the side quests can be dull. A hundred percent. Like, I would say there's there's not a ton of side quests in the game, um, but... I, I'd say maybe at this stage, four or five. Of so, them so have here, been here's good. here's an example. Tell me how it compares. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, there are also two points where you're like in town, doing like really benign town things, like when you help the little kid, the Moogle kid, and like yeah. somebody, you know, there's like a gang bugging somebody, and you gotta like go deal. You know, all the high points are in the main story quest missions, of which there is quite a bit. But then you do stop at these points where you're just doing like a really pedestrian side stuff. Is it like that? Is it that? Is that same kind yeah, of feeling? It, it's the same. It's the same principle. But every now and then, they surprise you with one. Like there was one. I I mentioned that I don't. You know, games rarely make me cry in the moment. There's one that genuinely made me start to tear up a little. Um, with and it was a side quest, and it was just like it kind of shocked me because it seemed like nothing. They were just like, "Yeah, we want to go do this thing," and you're like, "Okay, another side quest." Um, and it just turned into this really compelling look at one of the characters and their life and the impact they've had on other people. And I think where a lot of people get hung up is again this game when it's big and bombastic it's huge and it plays like an action game and I think it puts people in a mindset of expecting non-stop action big bombastic things but every now and then this game does play like an RPG where you go into town and people tell you to do things and those things are not always exciting like sometimes those things are pretty mundane and I think when people get to that um you know, it is one thing when those are side quests and you say, like, well, I'm either going to skip them or not do it. It's another thing when that is part of the main story quest. And it is. The game has an ebb and flow. You do a big, huge thing. You go back to town. They present what the next problem is going to be. They come up with a plan. You talk to three or four people to figure out what that plan is going to be. They say, all right, we'll go there. We'll start it. And then they give you a 
a couple side quests to do, a couple other things you can do, or you can go and, and continue that quest, and then that ramps up to the next big thing. And it's those little, like, town moments where you're just kind of building to the next thing that a lot of people, I think, kind of bounce off and say, like, oh, it's boring, it's uninteresting. But I'll tell you what this game has done, and it's the same strength that Final Fantasy XIV has when everybody says, look, a Realm Reborn is not the most exciting thing, but you should do it because it gives context to the rest of the game. I think that is also true here because there are moments, especially now that I'm getting to the end of the game, where you're doing more things for the side characters, like the, the characters that aren't going on every mission that aren't part of your party. And what I have found is how much I care about these characters. Like even some that are a little goofy, like there's a guy named Goots, and he's kind of this game's Hodor. Like, yeah. he's a big lumbering guy. He can say more than Goots. Like, he can talk, but he's, like, extremely socially awkward. Like, when he talks, it's always a little too loud. And it's always a little stuttery. And he always, like, has these weird, like, verbal tics where he'll he'll say, like, Okay, I'll go over there. <laughs> like, he'll just make a weird sound at the end of sentences and stuff. And I was like, this guy is... Like, kind of the worst. Why are we hanging out with this guy? And now here we are at the end of it, and there was uh, there was a person who was mean to Goots. And I was like, how dare you disrespect him? I will fight you to the death for being mean to this guy, because as boring as some of those side quests might have been uh, at times, and some of them are very skippable, or some of the smaller moments in the main story it builds that rapport and it builds that relationship and that understanding. I don't think everybody's looking for that. I don't think Scott is looking for that out of the game, but I think for people who are looking for the RPG, um, this game is lacking in a couple of areas for RPG, but one area it's not is that world building and that story. And it's made me care about the characters twice as much. Like even characters from like, ah, this character's kind of obnoxious. Like the shopkeep lady, she's kind of snooty every time I talk to her. But sure enough, found myself liking her more and more as I learned more and more about her past, as I helped her with her problems, as you see through that edge where it's like, oh, you know what? She's more than a sarcastic comment every time I buy a potion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a real strength to the game, but I think you have to know that it's there. Because the game will pretend that it is this fast-paced, constant-action game, but at its heart, it is still a slow-moving, role-playing game where you have to learn about the world and learn about the characters, and it's not constant go, go, go. Well, I'm just like, I'm showing some on the screen while you're talking, too, and I'm like, I find, you know, the, these two are, like, making out or whatever, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, what's going on with them? It does actually look involving. <laughs> like, now that I'm, I've never, I haven't really sat down and watched it too much, and uh, even though there's no audio, and, and you describing how epic it is, and, you know, I think, like, Final Fantasy VII has those side quest missions. I find them very important to, and they're kind of like, there's a lot of crescendo. It makes the crescendos louder when you have those low moments. Yeah. Like, I yeah. like the quest where, you know, it is kind of the mainline quest a little bit, but you know, there's a little side thing with uh, Jesse. Is it Jesse? Well, Jesse's the uh, the girl, like the the girl who's like kind of like kind of a mystery. Where she's like nothing in the original Final Fantasy VII. They've kind of built her up to like be like a complex character. You're just kind of like, well, what's her deal? She's like kind of being her flirty nature almost seems like a facade. Like there's something else going it on. It is, yeah, yeah. Like, like you kind of find out that yeah, that's exactly yeah, what it is. yeah. And that's it's like and it's just a side story, but like. I was really just, you know, into finding, like, I, they got my curiosity going about what's going on with this character. This is a side character. They're paying way too much attention. Um, and there's like something not going on, but I would consider it like a side quest, not a main thing. And so, I don't know. I think it just, I feel like that's, it's probably appropriate. Like I just, I can't participate in the conversation because I haven't played it. So I don't right, know. I don't that, know. I think that's a perfect example because I feel like, and I don't remember how much is main quest versus side, but I feel like it would be very, very easy to look at Jesse as a character and just go, ah, she's the flirty girl. Uh, she's a bit of a tease because she it was, always. If it was cars, that would be her whole thing. She's flirty. Yeah, and everything she does flirty, is flirting, but and not like... not really meaning it. But if you if you pay attention to her story, you get this like really interesting tragic story, and you learn more about her family. Like you 
you know why she is the way she is. You know who her dad was. You know who her mom is. You know how much her mom means to the other people in Avalanche. And that it's not just, they're not just off doing things. Like, they can go over for food and her mom will feed them in the middle of the night. Like, it, it creates this weird relationship. And it makes Jesse's story that much more compelling as you see it transpire because she's no longer just the flirty girl that's with the group. She's got a but past. She has of, a character behind yeah, it. She actually, if I remember correctly, she I think what it's alluded to, she has a past in the gold saucer. Like I, th uh, I think yeah, I, it's, it's something relating to gold past saucer. Acting. Yeah, like she she definitely was on stage or something. Yes, like I just feel like I don't remember her being involved at all in gold saucer in the original, but I have a feeling there's gonna. We're gonna have we're gonna see more Jesse and Gold Saucer. I feel like that's like a prelude to to more there, which is like cool. I'm like I'm into it, but it's uh, it's just one of those things where if you look at a game that's like super because epic in scope like sixteen, like it's like it's kaiju time, right? So why do I want to? Yeah. It's like how the Transformers movies spend time on Shia LaBeouf, and I'm like really. Really, you don't have to hire any actors. Like, I would just do robots the entire hour and a half runtime, please. Like, just crush a few of them, some blood and bones. Maybe make one little henchman that's like wants to serve the Transformers, but I, I really can just do Transformers all day. So it's, so it's just one of those things where you're like, if you're feeling the side story is great, if you're just here for the Transformers or the Kaiju in this case, then yeah, it's gonna, you're not gonna love it, I guess. But. Yeah, it's gonna have yeah. slow moments that you wonder why the hell are we why the hell are we doing this? And it feels like that's where Scott's gonna probably wind up on it. Um, for me, I've just found the entire thing really uh -huh. rewarding. I and think Clive is one of the best protagonists that Final Fantasy's had. Maybe yeah, he's ever. won you over. Like how 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 is he on the cloud meter? Is he very cloud like or is he his own thing? The thing is, is he goes through like a lot of similar beats because i mean like cloud and squall are very similar sure, um yeah you know like there's a like of the playstation era zidane whether you like him or not at least he wasn't a carbon copy of cloud and squall of just brooding like squall was actively awful cloud didn't care squall was like actively mean at times um but Clive has his moments like he goes through some serious business, but he also bounces back from it pretty quickly. So you kind of know that beat that Cloud goes through near the end of the game where it's like, OK, he's kind of gotten over his traumas and his his business and he's figured it out. Clive gets to that place a lot sooner. So is he, um, is he more of a Camina like from Gurren Lagann where he's like can do can solve it or maybe like a. Kiryu type character from Yakuza who's just like he's he's definitely more like even though really bad things have happened to him and even though he does have his moments of like am I maybe a monster like am I maybe not a good person he actively wants to do good hmm. and I think that that's a a different take for the protagonist in Final Fantasy where like he knows that he's trying to do good things um, but what's interesting about this world and this story is the good that they're doing is also very debatable whether or not it's good. Um, like, 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 like uh, Zack Snyder Superman style where they're just destroying the world and <laughs> while fighting their holy wars. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, no, not that. Like they don't really get into the collateral damage of the, the dominance that much. There is yeah. elements of it but they typically talk about it more strategically. They're like, if I turned into Titan right now, I'd be crushing our own enemy or our own army. So it doesn't make sense. You know, occasionally they'll mention stuff like that. Oh, it's like but, being friends with a hurricane. And it's just like my friend. But like one of the, one of the key beats of this, like one of the motivations for all these wars, the reason why these realms are all going to war is there's a thing called the, I don't know if it's the Mire. I might be thinking of the Diablo season. I think it's the blight. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the land goes completely lifeless. Everything just turns to, like, kind of blackish dust. And magic can't be used anywhere where it, there's blight. Like, you can literally go there with your magic abilities. If you're standing on blight, you can't cast. All you can do is swing your sword. Mm -hmm. um, and it is slowly encroaching on all of the world. And this is a world that has access to crystals. Crystals perform all their functions. So it's a world that never learned how to 
how to do anything. Like I just did a side quest where we built a bellows for a town that was all about forging stuff because they don't know how to get fire hot. They don't know how fire works because they just got fire out of a crystal. Like, mm. and that's what they've done their entire life is it's just like, well, why do I need to know how fire works? Because fire comes from crystals. That's, that's how you get fire. And so the premise is you have this world that has been overly reliant on magic, but now you have this thing that is removing magic from the world. And um, one of the early decisions in, in it is let's eliminate the source of all crystals. Oh. <laughs> and so you are, you are listed, like they refer to you as Clive the Outlaw. Like, so it is morally you, ambiguous. Like, yeah, you you believe you are saving the world, whether or not you are actually saving the world is it's not a, a it's not a pre perspective. Yeah, it's not a predefined certainty. Like how Thanos's idea is like, like it's an idea, a bad one, but you see the logic. Like, <laughs> right. there is there is logic behind it that is like. You can see how someone could get to that, right? Like, if there's too many yeah. people fishing in a river, well, fish the river less, you know? Like, so the logic is too many people consuming the resources of the galaxy make less of them, <laughs> you know? Like, there's, like, a logic, but it's, like, twisted, you know? And that's... So, he, you know, sometimes... In Thanos' case, it's, like, terrible. But, like, you can see how it could be more ambiguous. I don't know the story completely yet. So, yeah, yeah I kind of get what you mean. Yeah, and I'm trying to keep it a little a little ambiguous because it is stuff that you discover over, over time. And I don't want to go too spoiler heavy. But, like, they were actively talking about it prior to the game coming out. So I feel like it's not a spoiler if the people who are, were trying to keep spoilers free were out there saying... Yes, this is a Final Fantasy about destroying Mother Crystals, mm -hmm. which in Final Fantasy, Mother Crystals are usually like the source of life and a great important thing. And in this game, you are your goal is to destroy them. So it's it's interesting, but Clive as a protagonist is extremely well acted, but also very likable and also kind of dumb, but in an endearing way. Like, mm -hmm. and and like I, in I that do... anime way where he's like uh, learning about the world, you know, where it's like, Ooh. no, in like, he's good at swords and maybe not the best with brains. Oh, he's, like, a, he's a bit of a himbo, basically. <laughs> like there's a quest where you, it's a side quest, not a spoiler. This is, this is one of the bad side quests, but it did make me laugh at the end. There's a side quest where you, uh, some kids have stolen a scale and in trying to understand how a scale works, they took it apart. And Clive shows up to save the day, locate the scale, and get it back. And he's like, well, kids, you know, we just got to put it back together. So let's talk about it. And you monotonously, like, when you talk about quests being too long, this is a prime example of it. You explain what every piece of a scale is and does to these kids. And they show it, all of it. And Clive helps them put it back together. And he goes, there you go. All done. And he walks away feeling like a hero. And he forgot a piece. And the kids <laughs> are like, the, as he walks away, the kids look down at the table and they go, wait, he didn't put the gear on this thing. <laughs> and they go, does he know that? And then it cuts to a shot of Clive walking away with a big smile on his face like he's a big goddamn hero. And the kids in the background looking at him befuddled like, is he maybe an idiot? I don't know. And I love that they're not afraid to kind of tease that a little bit too. Uh, so he's he's like, not the perfect. He's hey, not perfect. Like he's yeah, yeah. yeah. He has he's flaws. flaws he has like anybody flaws. else. That yeah. makes him a little more relatable and human. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds like a great game. So you're eighty percent done, and uh, yeah. I guess we'll hear the end of it next week and. I will see if Scott's uh, keeping up and <laughs> finishing, or if it's this will we'll add this to the halls of unfinished games. Yeah, <laughs> Scott's hall. I of think unfinished this. Games. I I think Scott might have overestimated how long this game is, or underestimated maybe is the better uh, way yeah, to say it. Is it is a Final Fantasy uh, fifty to hundred hours is long. my expectation. Yeah. It has multiple times now hit a point where I was like, I feel like other games would have ended here, and said, "Come back for part two or DLC or." Something like that, and this game just keeps going. Uh, we'll see where he gets. I, I don't know. Should we do an unofficial vote on if we if we think oh, he's going to finish it or not? Are, are we laying odds on? Yeah, let's do a vote. I mean, a vote like with chat room. 
No, let's not do that. It's mean. It's just us. Uh, okay. Or unless you think so. I mean, it's not that mean. I mean, it's like we're no, all, we're all, I, yeah. we're all friends here. But we're not like yeah. just me. He has a reputation of not finishing games. It's okay. He He's allowed. On the show, don't think less of him. One hundred percent going to finish Ghost of Tsushima, a game he has not finished, <laughs> and he, it's been two years now. I just hate calling Maybe him out when so, he's not years. here. I hate calling anyone out when they're not here to defend themselves, but uh, no, it's fine. We can tell them about it next week. Yeah, or I, I guess I I'll have to care. tell them about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, next, <laughs> next week you can tell him about it when he checks in. Uh, do you want to Do you wanna pick? Do you think he beats Final Fantasy? And by that, I just mean the main story. We're not going to do so, any so, funny like, business about side quests. Just is he going to get the to cheer, The cheerleader on me wants to say yes, but the ARPG realistic person in me is like, no, he's not finishing this. I don't, I don't think so. He does not have a finishing track record, and he seems a real sour on getting through the vegetables of the video game. So <laughs> I kind of I kind of feel like it's like, it's not that he doesn't like it. I think he likes the game. I just, I, you know. I, I he was very he came out very strongly against the tedium of those middle sections so I don't I don't know I don't know and but uh, I mean he's sick yeah. so this would be a great time for him to continue on but he, he just there's a lot of he, play, he play, can't keep up with the amount of games he plays he's probably playing Dave the Diver right now or Final Fantasy VII on his uh, Amber Nick or something like that I don't know what he's <laughs> up to but I got a feeling uh, maybe not. Yeah, I'd love to make this a, like, hey, we're going to have a winner and a loser on the prediction, so I go with the opposite of what you picked, but I can't in good faith bet. I can't, I can't good this faith. Game. <laughs> I, a I banger can't conscience. pretend that it's going to happen. Yeah, we can't be good supportive friends about this. We have to obey our, conscious, our, our there, conscience, which there, is, no, he There's will not no finish. way he finishes this game. All I right. don't think it's going to happen. I hope this doesn't impact our friendship or our wrestling uh, relationship. <laughs> Uh, well, Bo, next week. speaking of your wrestling relationship. Yeah, I want to hear about, we need wrestling updates. Your wrestling relationship is bad right now, so I don't think you need to worry about it. Is it? Uh, Bo, you have been kicked out of core. What? I did not watch the latest VOD. What, are you kidding me, dude? What happened? Uh, so we, I decided last week we needed to put to bed this whole, like, core business, like, who's gonna be on core, how's Scott gonna feel, we all lost our titles, Scott feels like he's the only person carrying his weight, we need to just finally put it to rest. So I decided to do three matches. What the hell uh, happened, my dude? Me versus Kyle, and if I lose, I'm out of core. Martha versus Kristen. And if Martha loses, she's out of core. Oh, and you no. versus Garrett. And if you lose, you're out of core. And what? Uh, Bo, was... you're out of core. Not, the, not to who give did spoilers I, for the wrestling. Who, who, show, who, who did I lose? Who did I lose against? Garrett. Oh my God, Garrett's you you overtuned those grinding gear boys too much on your your balance pass. Was, was is this the show match? Yeah, I want to watch my walkout. My walkout's amazing. <laughs> Oh, I like that it uh, takes place in Phoenix, Arizona. That's pretty awesome. It actually changes. It changes between Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, Toronto, Canada, I believe, and oh, nice. uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So um, I'm out of core. I'm off the core team. <laughs> this, is, this, is so, <laughs> this is huge. What team? Am I, what am I gonna do? I don't know. You're you're now a free agent. Uh, we're gonna have to see. It's two weeks before Frog Wrestling continues because uh, Frog Wrestling also gonna be skipping a week. Uh, as I figure out what the hell I'm gonna do, I thought we might all be out because, uh, like you said, beating Grinding Gear is hard work. But uh, John got it done. Uh, Martha got some help, <laughs> and she did it. Um, and you just didn't manage to quite get it done you walked into the a move which is garrett's finisher and uh god gosh dang i'm going through, i'm it going just through didn't work out i'm going through a low point in my arc man i think the big problem is you didn't do taint no thing once like you didn't even you didn't even try what was i thinking uh, <laughs> yeah, you were too busy. You're too busy looking in VR. Uh, I think that's that's probably saying. like my mankindification. Just that I'm a kind of a chaos. I'm assuming my AI is more a little more chaotic, maybe than other wrestlers. I don't know how it works, but 
but yeah, maybe yeah. I can be the under VR taker now. You know, give me give oh, me like a necromancer yeah. theme or something. I don't know. It's not really yeah. something associated with me. I could also you could just put me in swimwear. I guess people like the, the <laughs> pe- people like the lake run business. I mean, look, Core wasn't doing you a lot of favors. You had a very short run as a tag team champion, so maybe this is going to be your opportunity to greatness. Maybe now you can go after the Dragon Beef title, or you could. Maybe you've got a redemption arc coming where then you're the next person to challenge Scott for the uh, Frog oh, Pants title. Maybe that's you definitely take it something. Away from him. That's definitely a storyline I want to pursue. I like, feel kicked out because of Scott's behavior. Like I'm like a casualty. Of Scott's reckless uh, win at all costs attitude, even at the cost of his friendships, and the, so so Scott is still running core, and you two you both stayed in. And I got kicked out for not pulling my weight, basically. Yeah, seems even like, even seems though like it. even though I was assault like for a while, Scott and I were thick as thieves. You were because you guys won the tag team titles together, yeah. but then you lost the tag titles getting pinned by Garrett. That tag title he's wearing in the video. He got from you because he pinned you last week. Uh, and Scott blamed you for it. I can't be mad at Garrett. He looks too cool. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, you you might end up on Grinding Gear. Who's to say? It can, oh, it can go anywhere. Oh. You're a free agent now, Bo. A lot could happen. Yeah, so well, we're going to have to... You have a lot of wrestlers on the roster. You should definitely give me like a a break like a little you know what's he doing kind of thing for a yeah few weeks. disappear for a while yeah, yeah as i as i plan my takeover of, or something <laughs> you know, yeah. i think that's how wrestling lines go that people experience down arcs they disappear for a while and they come back yeah and then they come young. back repackaged and ready to go who knows yeah. what the repackaged bow is going to be like although i can't mess with you too much because people would riot you are 100 percent everybody's I... <laughs> favorite character i definitely feel like a so. mascot for the league like yeah like because you're like why would i watch this wrestle this this ai wrestling it's like because this guy with the vr headset it's wild <laughs> you, know, you know you you put me on the marquee post to say the frog wrestling is so crazy this guy wears a vr someone should really do that though right like you've invented a legit wrestler gimmick like forget that it's me for 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 a second you've <laughs> yeah. invented a whole wrestler shtick that is not done that could totally be you know someone could be mark zuckerborg or something like just or zuckerborg <laughs> is a great name <laughs> like just just some like you know tech billionaire turned wrestler who wears the vr headset and totally does things like you you literally create i don't know what they call it a profile or a, a you know a top down gimmick I just happen to be the one wearing it, but um, yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's real good. Um, I mean, so if, I'm... if we see a VR wrestler in the next, like, well, as you're doing this and the year after 100%, they watched your wrestling and took I it think from there. so. I yeah. think so. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then you'll see what I mean um, when, when D and D all of a sudden has hell chickens. <laughs> and you're like, that's a, good, that's a good point. <laughs> Chad says, this is the time to get Crofton in. Maybe, maybe. I do have three characters that I'm currently, I've got the approvals from them to make and just have to make, but the tough, maybe, maybe the tough the thing about Crofton, Crofton is he, as a manager he's is, a fun is, personality, but like he's a Bob Sacramento. So it's just like, uh, you, the more we do with him, the less Bob Sacramento he becomes. And I, I, we don't, you know, I don't know about that. That's true, but maybe he's just a, a name and like a mysterious entity that follows you to the ring. Oh, maybe there's just like you do like a spot and it's just who is Crofton and that's all it is. You know, like they do these things like who is Mike Jones <laughs> yeah. or something. Like it's just yeah. like that's all it is and you never see him. It's just, it's just like this huge viral campaign. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a good week. I gave a lot of people new. Uh, I think costumes. he's definitely. Kristen's new to the ring costume is amazing. It's maybe the coolest thing I've ever made. Kristen's... I don't know if you want to scrub. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's... Kristen's coming to the yeah. ring. Hell yeah. It is maybe the coolest. Like, I looked at it and I was like, this is genuinely creeping me out. Is it which mixed means tag? I've definitely gotten it. Uh, is it the mixed tag um... match? No, it should be the match right before yours. Oh, okay. Um, and it's what she wears to the ring. Is this a th- uh, because a th- the whole the whole idea with Kristen, it's lightly based on a character she played. Okay, so that's the end of the match. Yeah, yeah we just yeah. when she comes down. Um, but uh, her whole theme is like she 
You gave her some seems D4 to be Barbarian? Little Red Riding Hood, but oh. she's actually the big bad wolf. That's gotcha, the that's gotcha. the idea. Um I'm getting and... I'm getting D4 Barbarian vibes too, which I know she's a big barbarian fan. Yeah, well, I mean, I figured she's the one who's most likely able to just beat the crap out of all of us. So um yeah, yeah it'll be Martha first, so it'll be after Martha. Oh, scrub to Martha. Um, but she's uh, Kristen's crazy powerful. Um up until last night or yeah last night oh she shit. had never been pinned she's, she's also a little bit of a destiny character holy shit yeah, yeah. she's yeah. Uh, for our audio she, listeners she's got a helmet or something on her face like she doesn't show her face that cloak is like like vala like it's giving me vala vibes like this is all just very diablo vibes even though i get the theme i think the theme makes a lot of sense it yeah. just looks like, you know, Blizzard armor set. <laughs> it does. It does. You got a big maw, teeth, yeah. uh, cloaks. You got the whole Blizzard thing going. Um, yeah, people are looking for clues for the new people. I'll Honestly, tell you, she might be the is... coolest coolest appearing wrestler that you've got in the whole league, to be honest she, with you. She does, yeah. She's gotten three costume changes, mostly because I didn't feel like I had gotten it right, but now I finally do. Um but uh, I'll, I'll give people hints for the new wrestlers because I see chat asking. Um, we'll say it's two women, one man, and one of the wrestlers is related to a current wrestler on the roster. Those are your hints. All right. I have no idea who that might be. So no clue. there you go. That's your. Those are your hints. That's all you're getting until they make their appearance. Because who knows when that'll be? Because it takes a long time to make new wrestlers. Um, All right. But, uh, anyway. Yeah. yeah so if you want to check that wrestling. out, it's Craftless Rogue on YouTube. Go and sub. I see you're almost at 1K. We got to get you at 1K. I guess you got your verification anyway, sir. Yeah. They let you, apparently, they let you do some stuff. They let you do some partner stuff early. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm technically a partner now and can do monetization hmm. on some things, uh, even though I'm not quite to the thousand yet i hit the other benchmark but not quite to the thousand followers but yeah i've already got Still a partner make, and making good progress you have a whole well. wrestling federation yeah. and yeah we're gonna get you that verified soon although uh, it's not gonna matter much for frog wrestling because there's so much licensed wrestler music in there uh it's oh it always gets copyright flags so yeah but you're you're just trying to get followers now anyways yeah. i guess yeah. you know so. it's no, no big deal you're not trying to earn revenue on these that's you just have to Find your audience. Oh, I meant to put it in the show notes. I guess I can talk about it later, but just on the YouTube front, I've been, you, have you heard of this YouTuber called John Josh Strife Hayes? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen this stuff. I've been like, I guess this kind of goes under stuff you should play unless you have something else on yours. I can just transition to that one, but I no, like, no, go for it. That's when what I'm I've offline. Played, um, not a lot of new stuff when I'm not streaming and I'm playing video games and I have need second monitor content. I've been mainlining the shit out of his, uh, worst mmo ever series yeah his stuff's really <laughs> really good um, <laughs> i just like that series because <laughs> my god there's some terrible mmos out there and i really just you know you, you don't see those games so you don't want to judge them too harshly but then someone has played them and is judging them harshly and you're like i'm glad i didn't try any of these piles of crap anyways i've been really enjoying that uh that thing just speak of youtubers um, for video games for me, I have been playing, uh, drum roll, please. Diablo four. Wow. Nothing, <laughs> I've been play, <laughs> I have, I've done nothing but play Diablo four. Uh, I'm still Not playing since I said final fantasy and wrestling. Have I been so shocked by a, uh, yeah. what somebody's been played this week. So, so here's the thing I'm playing more like everyone else now and not like a, a maniac and this playthrough has definitely like it's like two different people are playing because like, so i have i definitely have a different opinion of the game the way i'm playing it now i.e i have a full-time job i got some responsibilities i gotta do uh i want there's some other things i want to do apart from play this one game um it takes way too much time to i, I realize you're not just supposed to hit 100 and go to end game 50 is the end game, but you know, for that carrot on a stick of going to a hundred, it takes a long damn time when you're playing it small doses like this. Like it's almost like 
it's almost like it, it's like a, an off ramp for the game where I'm just like, oh, this game's clearly not made for me. Like I can play the campaign and then be done with it. Um, so I don't know where seasons fit in. If the bro, if it's like D three and you can crank out max level in a weekend, that changes things entirely. Then like okay, but. Um, if like base game where you, you got to, it's really like they weren't kidding about a hundred to 150 hours on the, uh, on getting to level 100, uh, doing that four hours at a time on work nights, you know, like, it's just like, I, I'm playing the rogue now and I'm like, I really should be playing other games. This is like, not like I'm having fun and it's okay, but it's like, it's, it's just a lot of evenings uh, to do this stuff. So yeah. that's why I also say, like, I'm pretty sure D4 is going to be down to that's like people with ARPG syndrome are going to play this game because they have the time and the dedication and don't miss out on playing other games. That's the one thing I, I, I always like puzzle over with a lot of these like content creators that are ARPG guys. I know they have their audience and maybe they're making an okay living at doing it, or in some cases, maybe really good. I just don't understand. Um, how they're never like i need to play some other shit because it's not it's not that like heroes i get like a new uh, every match or any moba or even like a tcg like every match is like a new experience there's something fresh about it there's unknowns every nightmare dungeon is like you know there's some modifiers it's the same stuff it's also like you run into that problem in high level starcraft 2 co-op commanders when you've like mastered all the maps like it's just repeating the same stuff sometimes it, it like i think with long breaks in between it gets interesting or like hades where your run is definitely different each time to some extent or like other roguelikes that you have to approach the challenge with what you have i feel like diablo 4 is like this is a 150 hour long roguelike because you don't know what items you're gonna get so you gotta try and you will have your target build but then you're gonna use items based on what you get so like for Rogue, I've like pivoted entirely to Sky Hunter, which is actually like kind of a bad bow, but it's like a weird build around me bow and it's not doing that bad, but that part is fun. It just takes too many hours. So I think that's with the season, I really like that they said potentially broken stuff. That was actually the best part of their presentation uh, because yeah. that means maybe I can play the game in 20 hours <laughs> and not, or, and, you know, do seasonal quest stuff, but like not feel like I have to play every day. I kind of wanted to get all the characters to level 100 because I, you know, ARP, it's just ARPG EP, EP and things. Like, it'd be really cool if I could brag that I have a level 100 of each race and class. Mainly because, like, mainly because I want to show I have a bigger EP than these giant content creators that are like, like, and there's a lot of them they're like, that are like, you know, I don't want to play hardcore. What if I get disconnected? And I'm like, you're like a multi million dollar content creator like make some content go play hardcore like stop whining about it. <laughs> like it's what like it's you and scott or anyone else being like i don't want to play hardcore because i don't want to get disconnected i'm like yeah i understand like it's fine but there's like some people like Crip is an example who he only just started playing hardcore now and in the beginning he, he was like i don't want to play hardcore i'm like he's the dude known for the first diablo kill uh, uh you know for d3 like that's his like claim to fame and he's like i'm just like you're sitting here and like i'm not gonna play diablo 4 because i'm scared of getting disconnected i'm like what kind of legend are you why are people giving you money like just try and fail and which happened anyways he got killed i think due to actually it wasn't a game bug he actually got killed due, due to mechanics in the high 80s when he, he's eventually gone there so I'm just, all I'm saying is I'm a little disappointed in some of my heroes that like played D3 who like chickened out on D4. That's like who I'm calling out specifically. It's like <laughs> some of these guys who like You're play, they play games all day. You could have done it. Like if I have my ass and get to level 300, you could have tried to. And so I, you know, I want those people to stop feeling like they can exempt themselves <clears throat> from the effort. Um, but certainly if you're working for a living or you just don't have the time to like make that kind of grind and it's going to be a hundred hours. It's not worth it. And that again, to our conversation, that makes me feel like this, it's going to be a dead game. People are going to come back, play a little bit and piss off. So I hope it's, uh, I hope it's, um, the leveling process is much faster in the season. Cause the other thing seasons do too in D three is they increase the drop rate. So 
I feel like there's already pretty good drop rate and high levels, but hopefully there's, you know, those uniques that only one person in the world has ever gotten, like six of them. That's, yeah. a, it's a little, it's a little ridiculous. Little yeah. Little. I think that's extremely stupid. Like I, I don't know. To me, those sorts of drop rates serve a, an idea more than it serves a player base. Like, is it cool to think about an item so rare that only a few people will ever get it? Mm. Yes. Is that cool to be a player of the game where that's a principle in it? No. Like, it's one of those things where it's more compelling as a thought experiment. And I, I think it's neat to talk about and it's neat to write news articles about it. I tweeted about it a little passive aggressively where I said more people are going to benefit from writing articles about rare item in Diablo 4 picked <laughs> up by player than people that will actually get the items. Right. Um, Cause I'm a little jaded about it. Like I'm just, yeah. I, I got recommended like three news stories about like this rare item dropped in Diablo 4. I was like, who gives a shit? Like if you're going to make an item that's so rare that almost nobody sees it, that to me, when I hear that, what I hear is, don't worry about it. That item's not in the game. Yeah. Like, just don't think of it as an item. And if you're wait, if you're wasting some of your itemization on something that might as well not be in the game, then you're doing exactly that. You're wasting your itemization. Yeah. And it comes back to that feeling of this game kind of feels shallow at the end. And if it feels shallow, what would help that? More items, not items that have such a low drop rate that only a handful of people are ever going to yeah. see them. Even in my, my initial run, I really wanted Temerity, which isn't actually that rare, but I never got one. I got like a hundred of the other common uniques, but not one of those ones. I got one on my Rogue finally, like last night. But, um, you know, I had to make do with something else, but that was kind of annoying. And But in particular, I wanted Grandfather, which is a good two-hand sword. Uh, which I think only two people in the world have gotten. But like on my run, I was like, oh, any minute now, I'm, I'm like level 98. I'm pushing like 101 dungeons. Like, got a high drop rate. We're going to get grandfather, right? And then you realize I'm level 98. Like, the build, this is the build. I'm not playing past 100. Like, <laughs> yeah. who cares if yeah. it drops? It's almost pointless. So I kind of hope they jack up the drop rates for seasons like they did with Diablo 3. Um, that was definitely a thing for D3. So I don't see why they wouldn't do it in D4, but I don't know if they talked about that today. But, um, the other thing I wanted to comment on is I completed all time. I've 100% of the renown list, every side quest, um, every side quest, every altar, every stronghold, everything all done. I have, I have full achievement on the rogue. Uh, I haven't done full achievements cause there's other achievements, but full con like I, there's no content I haven't seen except for the cow level. Um, yeah. which does not exist. But um, apart from that, uh, you know, I did the by three they come, which was kind of a neat thing. Sad they didn't play the this the trailer played at launch of the game. I felt like maybe they should have could have shown the, that that trailer in the game at that point. But it was still cool to go to that zone. Uh, I got yeah, I think it opens with it if uh, like on a brand new game. I think it opens. I gotta say, it. big time feedback in case any D four devs they probably already heard this, but for the quest tracker. Please give me a list of quests I've completed. Because one of the most annoying things is when you're down to the nub or two or three and some of them come from random drops. I have no idea what zone to go farm in. I'll go look up a yeah. list on a third party site, but I spent time in a few zones just farming mobs going like, I think this, I got the wrong, I, I don't know which one I completed. I better go to this other zone in case I'm wrong about it because I have no idea what's finished. So we need a way to know what we've done and not done if especially if we're going to go through the roster or the the, the quest list uh, every season um yeah and right now i'm just i'm contemplating whether i'm going to play a new game in the weeks leading up to baldur's gate <clears throat> or even season one versus i kind of have an appetite to go like do some achievements and stuff like they're not that hard most of them the only hard one is getting 10 kills in hardcore pvp um like yeah. <laughs> i'm like yeah. that one's that, that one's an challenging I, i'm very tempted to cheese that one because i am a content creator just to be like all right guys roll some level ones so i can get my achievement please <laughs> everybody help me i'm, I'm, help I'm very me. tempted i also need teammates for elixir but there's the lake runners uh softcore clan i think i'll go in there and just buff people that's not that bad but i'm gonna need some I just, I, I don't, I, I, I think I want to earn them legitimately, but I don't want to earn them legitimately. I kind of just, you know, I don't think I, I think I'll have to cheese that one. I mean, a kill is a kill, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Does any level ones want to play? You, you got an ear in your bag. If you do, then you got it. It's fine. Like, like, um, you know, the, I was watching videos. I don't even know how I got into those videos, but apparently in WoW Classic on PTR right now, there's like one Death Knight that's like level 30. Maybe it's an NPC and everyone's rolling level ones to try and beat it. Like there's 500 level ones tr trying to beat a level 31 NPC or something like that. And apparently people have done that before in PvP where like a level 60 Death Knight or 70 Death Knight was fighting like 500 level 1 mages or something like that. It looked really cool, all the mage spam. Mage spam and WoW looks amazing. Um, I don't know why I was looking that up, but like I need something like that, but for Diablo 4 where I'll be the level 100 and, and I will, you know, and then you guys can try and kill me with your level 1s. Sound fun? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, just uh, for, for my regular viewers, I might be asking you for that favor so I get that achievement. Uh, but a, it. but apart from that, that's pretty much it for all I played. So that's that's all I got. So I think that means we can head to the break, uh, John. Not too yeah. bad. We're a little later. I think we usually take a break uh, two hours in. We're a little over. Uh, but uh, when we get back, we'll do the news and all that business. So, yeah. Are you ready for break? I don't have a... Uh, all I've got is the sound which I'll play now, which means break's happening soon. It's poorly timed. That's the break's happening sound. <laughs> here it is. Yeah, so I will leave it on this screen here. Get ready to turn. Yeah, that's going to play. But there you go. You can watch me touch this uh, bag of Ragnaros, and we'll be right back. There you go. So, hey, we're back. And uh, when we're back, that means it's Dear Martha time. Do we have a Dear Martha this week? I do. Uh, oh, I shit. imagine it's going to be somewhat somewhat lacking without the music right. that's okay uh, this you, week's a little you, bit different it's a little bit sentimental wait hang and on. so what's the, what's the uh as song a result, he plays called i don't know so we're we're gonna be lost let's just uh, i'll just read without it we're just gonna have to do it yeah theater I'm, of the mind you've all, right. all heard the martha music take a moment to imagine it kicking in uh this week we're doing something a little bit different um it was a little iffy with Scott's situation if we were actually going to do a core today. As a result, I did not have a Martha prepared. Uh, but coincidentally, someone sent me a Dear Martha that they wrote on Steam. And uh, in in honor of a, a fan doing that for, for us, in honor of us, I'm going to read it on the show. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to read a Dear Martha that... I Again, I didn't write it, but someone did it in the style of a Dear Martha. It is a review for Dave the Diver on Steam. All right, here we go. And uh, imagine the music swelling. My dearest Martha, I pen this letter with an exhilaration that can, o that can scarcely be contained within the lines upon this page. My travels have brought me to distant shores far from the comforts of our humble abode. It is in this unfamiliar land that I have made a remarkable discovery, one which I am compelled to share with you, my love. Imagine, if you will, a world unlike any we have ever known, a world encapsulated within the confines of a newfangled contraption they call Dave the Diver. This game, my dearest, is a marvel of ingenuity and artistry. It's pixel art reminiscent of the sketches I would often draw for you. It combines seamlessly with its 2.5 dimension graphics to create an outstanding visual experience. But it is not merely the aesthetics that captivate me, Martha. The game's very essence, its core gameplay loop, rather, is a symphony of adventure and occupation. You see, my love, within this virtual realm, I find myself immersed in a most thrilling pursuit. I dive into the depths of the water, exploring its hidden treasures and skillfully catching fish with a nimbleness I could only dream of possessing in reality. Yet, dear Martha, here comes the twist that elevates this experience beyond the realm of ordinary entertainment. The fish I catch are not meant for sustenance alone, but rather to serve as ingredients for sushi. Can you fathom the combination of an action-adventure exploration game and a sushi restaurant simulator? It is a fusion of genres so unique and enthralling that it defies convention. And here, my dear, 
is where I must express my gratitude to the core podcast team. What was through their musings and discussions that I stumbled upon this hidden gem of a game? Had it not been for Scott Johnson, John Jagger, and Bo Schwartz, I fear I would have remained oblivious to the wonders of Dave the Diver. Speaking of which, I must emphasize the importance of ensuring that John Jagger and Bo Schwartz receive their due recognition. It is they who have sparked this fascination within me, and it is only fair that they should receive more of these free game codes so they may continue their adventures within this digital realm. But enough about games and podcasts, my love. There is yet another adventure that awaits me on the horizon. Soon, I shall join some dear friends at the lake, where tales of peculiar newfangled invention have captivated their imaginations. They speak of something called a lake run, a method of utilizing the water closet amidst the natural splendors of the outdoors. The stories they weave are as intriguing as they are amusing, and I cannot help but anticipate our forthcoming excursion with great excitement. May this letter find you in good health and spirits, my dearest Martha. I await your response with bated breath, eager to hear your thoughts on my newfound digital escapades and the tales of the lake run that lie ahead. Until we are reunited, know that I that you reside always within the depths of my heart. With all my love, S. Beckett. Woo! That was a long one. That was good. I gotta tell you, I emergency found uh, another Ken Burns song. Uh, so oh yeah. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. royalty free, but it was perfect. It's because there was like a real usually it's kind of depressing the song, but this had a real hopeful upbeat thing and you were like I'm going out to discover a thing called Lake Run and it's like the music's like doom 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 you'll have to listen back and <laughs> it actually really yeah, worked. Back. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um nice nice one. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um excellent. Well, uh, so that's our dear Martha, everyone. Uh, now here's this. Other news <laughs> of note. I don't think that's what we usually call it, but that's what's written here. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 characters confirmed we got. Uh, John, do you want to take this? Because I didn't put this in here, so I don't, I don't want to get things wrong. Yeah, so they showed off a little more Mortal Kombat 1 today. We got confirmation that the ninjas smoke and rain are going to be playable characters in the game, and that cameo characters uh, confirmed Cyrax, Sector, Frost, and Kung Lao. Now, I was a little surprised at first, because uh, Kung Lao is actually one of my favorite Mortal Kombat characters. I just think he has an incredibly cool look, an incredibly cool gimmick. He's like... Uh, you know, sorry to all you Liu Kang people out there. He's like Liu Kang if Liu Kang was cool. Although, I will say this, like, fire god Liu Kang is pretty cool. They got there. It took a while. Um, but I, I really like Kung Lao, so there was a part of me that went, Oh no, Kung Lao's just a cameo fighter? Is he not going to be in the game? But I think they did say that some cameo fighters would be both playable and cameo fighters. So, I don't think the fact that Kung Lao is a confirmed cameo fighter means he's not going to be in the game. So I think uh, I think that's okay. Kung Lao is um, the hat, I think this... hat man, right? Yeah, he's got the razor yeah. hat. Yeah, and uh, I I'm a big fan of all these characters. I like Smoke. Smoke has always been one of my personal favorite of the ninjas. Just there's something about like Reptile and Smoke for me were the two big ones. Like Reptile because he was the first big ultra secret character where people would say like, "Hey, did you know there's a green ninja in Mortal Kombat?" And you were like, "You're making that up." And then you'd see the green ninja, and you're like, what? And uh, it was mind-blowing that such a thing would exist. And, and then, Andy's so a reptile. Smoke, He's like a literal reptile. Yeah, and he does the, the finisher that Scorpion does, but instead of a skull, he's, he's a reptile. It's crazy. He eats your head. So that sort of stuff was always cool, and Smoke was sort of the next stage of that. And uh, the idea of a wispy Smoke ninja just makes sense. Uh, and Rain uh, is a purple ninja, which is a reference to Purple Rain which is a song I really like, and uh, that's all you need to know. He has water moves. You got your water ninja, your smoke ninja. What else do you need? So, Maybe like uh, cool chocolate, announcements chocolate there. Ninja. Chocolate ninja? Yeah. yeah someone they, who steals all the chocolate. 
I don't know. Yet to appear, unfortunately. Uh, I'll work Mortal the Kombat. joke. I don't think it's that okay. funny. It wasn't, it's just, you, you know, know, it's all right. I mean, Although we are getting into that, like, Rain is not recognizable as a ninja. And I think we've talked about this on the show. I, as Oh, because he kind of looks like You don't want them a... to just do palette swaps, but I'm such a fan of palette swaps that I wish it was just palette swaps. Yeah, well, you need both, but if, if you're going to call something a ninja, he has to have ninja class armor, or it's kind of cheating. Like, yeah. is he the guy that's dressed like an acolyte that I'm seeing here? I think so, because he yes. has rain effects. Yeah he, yeah, he looks like a guy I kill in Diablo 4, like a cultist. Like, He looks cool and everything, but, you know, I'm not getting ninja vibes from it necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's fine. And I'm I mean, sure there will be I, a version of his costume that is palette swap I, ninja. We don't want to be but, ninjutsu gatekeepers here, but if you, you know, there are standards. <laughs> there, are stand <laughs> <laughs> there are standards, I, I think. I guess I'm not really an expert, but I feel like if you're wearing a, a cape, if you're a cape wearer, you're more a magic y cultisty guy and not a ninja. I did not see the finishers that were in this video. They're pretty good. The eh? fatality. They're pretty good. Which one? Was it was what? the last one? Yeah. Yeah, but what I loved is it looked like Scorpion. So uh if you go back a little further, Scorpion, the cameo fighter Scorpion, because that's like classic MK1 Scorpion doing a fatality there. So I think there's gonna be a mode where your your cameo fighters can do fatalities as well. And he, he burns the guy, and the guy explodes, but it really harkens back to, like, Mortal Kombat 2 era, where people just had way too many bones in their body. Oh. And right. it looks, it looks like yeah, that. Okay, it looks like yeah. too many, it looks like too it's many too bones. many bones. Too, <laughs> what a funny criticism, but too many, it is a too many bones situation, for sure. I love it so much. It's such a weird, like, callback, because it was something that, as a kid, you were just like, yeah, it's so brutal and violent. And then you get older and you think more about it. And you're like, people don't have that many. Like, every bone is a femur. Yeah, and there's yeah. like a hundred of them in the body. That last, and does, that last one was... You know what I like about their trailers? Because they were cagey before where they didn't show a lot of... I feels like they didn't... It feels like. Maybe they did. It feels like they didn't show a lot of the finishers until they did like finisher teasers, like separate. But now their trailers are just like... <laughs> <laughs> the, they end with a montage of, of just the finishers and they hit different yeah. when they're like one after the other it's really i think it's the marketing is really well done yeah i think yeah. this cameo thing is gonna be cool because if it's gonna harken back to mortal Kombat in stupid ways i'm all for it i it's it feels like it's half retro but also we've advanced the tech if that makes any sense yeah. like it feel kind of that's kind of what overwatch felt like when it first came out where you're getting this cartoony step back but also step forward because the fidelity and you know what at the time like what was on offer for for a game like that it feels kind of in that vein where it looks everything resembles the arcade machines a little more but also it looks better than 11 and 10 you know yeah yeah I here's like their here's the challenge guys although i i suspect somebody can tell me if this is true but the true challenge you need to find a way to do the fatality where somebody got their head uppercutted off multiple times in a row. I don't know if you remember that old fatality glitch. I think it was from Mortal Kombat 2. But there was an old fatality where you could kind of mess it up. And uh, the character would punch their opponent's character's head off. But they would do it multiple times. So the head would fly off. You'd see it fall on the ground. But then there'd still be a head there. And they would just do it multiple times. That's your challenge. Find a way to do that finisher with modern graphics and have it make sense. Uh, that's what I want. <laughs> that's what I want to see. I want to see the multiple head uppercut, but done technically accurate. I think we're going to get a lot of crazy fatalities in this. Um, okay, so uh, next, uh, Nintendo has a new console, apparently. Well... We know that they're going to make a follow-up to the Switch. Like, Common Sense says, yes, Nintendo has confirmed it to right. it, to exist, that it's something they're working on. They have not officially announced it, but Nintendo does have a developer-facing portal where it is private. You have to be able to log in as a Nintendo developer, but 
Oh. Pictures have emerged that there is now a new Nintendo platform oh. on there. It is listed as the NX2. Are there pictures? Uh, I didn't even know there were pictures. There's not pictures. It's just it's a screenshot oh. of like where it lists what system you're developing for, and the NX2 is now listed as one of the platforms. Okay, there's a um, little hint though here about it, right? Um, from to a I'm degree, seeing. yeah, because it still looks like the Joy it's Con the same, controller. Like, so I'm just looking at a picture where it says developer support. It says it has the same icon as the Nintendo yeah. Switch for the Joy Con because yeah. like 3DS looks like a 3DS, Wii U looks like a Wii U, but Switch and NX2 look identical. And the Switch code name was the NX, so this being called the NX2 is a direct reference to this is the I mean, sequel it makes so to much, the Switch. Makes so much sense. They don't need to innovate or do anything weird. They have a hit on their hands. They just need to make a better hit. And yeah, it's actually just more awesome. powerful. Like it's awesome that Steam Deck came out with what they did because maybe I know they might not, but maybe they'll feel compelled to push the envelope on hardware to also be like we have this and it's also better than that stop it sure would be nice right like it would be nice to feel like well it's not just that it's I... a competing device it's a competing like if i was a you know a jerky nintendo guy i'd be like it's a competing piracy device like i would yeah. view it i would view it that steam literally like valve literally made those damn americans literally made a device that enables piracy and we can't do anything about it but we hate them, so we're going to beat them. You know, the only way to get through this is they can't, like, take that off the market. They can't uncap that. I, you know, they, I'm sure their lawyers are watching like a hawk for where they can because I know there was some issue with, I guess, an image that was displayed once in their marketing or something like that for an emulator. But um, they certainly can make a better product. <laughs> you know, like, that, that's, yeah. that, that's like an option open to them. So I hope they do that. Uh, yeah, okay. I agree yeah. too. There we go. NX2, everyone. Uh, Battle Bit Remastered. So I don't know. I added this in. I don't know if we have much to say about this, but uh, I've been this. This is I've been getting mentions about this because this is kind of like a like a planet side, planet side, side adjacent. I looked yeah. at the trailer for this because it looked vaguely planet side esque. Like I guess it's what it does is it has a lot of people per server. And it's kind of like a chaos thing. And it's, it, I, I, my understanding is it's a pretty indie team that built this and they put out a remastered version and it's, it's still 2 million copies and people are playing it like gangbusters. And I'm having a little bit of FOMO cause I've like got other things to do, but like, this is kind of, this is, this, there's a real hotness to this game right now. And, um, anyway, it's always notable. We don't usually do like this game sold this many copies, but always notable when an indie, like a small group of people hit really big with a game. So, um, well, yeah, and just... this ties into something that we've talked about. Like, again, I, I think it's unfortunate that it got so tied up in frame rate issues, but this was tangentially connected to what we were talking about with the frame rate issues because one of the things that that was all tied to was the fact that games are getting so damn expensive to make, in addition to how long they take to make. And when you see a small team put out a game like this this is what i'm talking about when i say the game industry is in trouble and there could be problems down the line with our desire to constantly push beyond the means of even our systems and what's financially reasonable is you have companies little indie dev teams making stuff like this that are selling incredibly well for much less of a budget, they're doing it under the noses of the bigger developers because they can get it done faster, even with fewer people, because at the end of the day, it isn't just about graphics. Like, people want these video games, they want these experiences, and it's not as important if the gameplay is good that it's the best-looking thing ever made. And there's a lot of frustration in AAA studios that this game not only came out, but is doing as well as it is because they want to be the ones that are making this. And this is capturing that audience in a fraction of the time for a fraction of the money. And it's getting all the attention and all the, all the glory as it were. And this is the problem. This is why we need to 
be more willing to rein it in on our expectations for AAA. Even though I don't think that will ever happen, it's why we need to, because these sorts of things are going to continue to get made and continue to be popular, and that's good for us playing the games, but AAA development is going to keep losing to stuff like this. It's just going to keep happening. It really does remind me of Planetside, which is like a game of that scope is pretty huge for, I think it's three people, like Ziggurat in the chat saying three people, and I think I heard that too. So I, I just feel like um, it's funny that you say this. There was an article on PC Gamer that I was reading that isn't in the show notes, but they were talking about there's an ex-dev. It seems to be a thing now where ex-devs from companies that go on to have mild hobbies as YouTubers just doing tell-alls. So there's an ex-dev from Carbine or Carbon who did Wildstar, talk, like dishing about like what happened with the about that MMO. And basically there's like, it's alleged in his perspective, but he's like, basically because of like one shitty art director, um, him and a bunch of other leads who are really talented ended up quitting the project. And that's why like, you know, there's all kinds of theories about why it ended up, you know, cancel getting canceled and all that stuff. But basically it's like inner bureaucracy and mismanagement and people's egos and, and stuff getting in the way of the game. Like it's almost inescapable if you have a large group of people and then people inside that organization clash for whatever reason, it's just hard, hard the, the games are hard to make to begin with. Right. I know, I know, yeah. make it in a weekend. Just leave me alone, please. But like, <laughs> but like, you know, these are like large scale projects. They do take teams of people and when they're not getting along, cause they have other priorities that don't relate to the game that are just a part of being in a big business. Um, it's no wonder that like, you know, something like Redfall could come out, right? Because everyone's like, yeah. I did my job. It's not my fault. Right? Like not everyone in the not everyone in that company is gonna have that attitude. Like it's just even take that arcane, like the Redfall business. Like everyone there knows what state it shipped in. And I'm sure not everyone's gonna be like gonna have that altruistic, well, I was part of the problem because I was one of the developers. You know, they're gonna be people that are like, It's not my fault. I did my job. You know, yeah. if we would have done this, the game would have been good or whatever. So it's kind of like, it's almost like asking a tiger not to be a tiger in a way. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you hire the right talent to get the right group of people together to make a thing. Well, and, and it's also tricky because, you know, it's always that joke debate. Our video games are, I don't think that really matters. Like, I think it's fair to say that making video games is an artistic endeavor. It's going to, to attract, maybe not universally, but it's going to attract creative, artistically minded folks. And creative, artistically minded folks are known to be somewhat stubborn and set in their ways. Um, they have a vision. They don't always work the best with others. Uh, and it's kind of understandable that egos exist and stuff like that. Like, not that it excuses it, especially if the player base that has to pay for it, uh, you know, suffers, but I, I get why people go into video games where all of a sudden it's this mass team collaboration, but they feel like, no, I'm an artist, I have a vision, and I want to execute on my vision, and why that leads to clashing egos. Not to mention that it's all run by business-minded people that don't give two shits about the artistic side of it. They just care about the profits on the back end of it. We're talking so, about leadership. Like, I mean, if you're rank and yeah. file, you might have opinions, but you're 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 there to do a job. I think I think it's like more the executive leadership who's like looking at the whole package and trying to provide a cohesive experience involving multi multiple disciplines. You know, if they're not getting along. I mean, it just seemed like even in the story he was telling, there, there could be like factionality among the teams, even like if your manager is trash talking another manager or department head or whatever, then those employees take that opinion on, you know what I mean? Then it like, yeah. it, there becomes like factionalism. I mean, all the, all the bullshit of corporate existence, right? Like, I mean, it's not unique to video game companies. Um, anyways, it's just too, it's just too bad. But, uh, that's why I think like Indies are really important because like, um, one of the things I can't remember who said it, it's really cheesy, but like smaller, faster, um, larger, farther, which is just like, you know, sometimes we need both basically, you know, yeah, like it is possible for large teams to do in the end of the day, way more, 
but there's a high risk of failure. It seems like in the game industry, like Larian has 400 people now, and I'm pretty sure this project's gonna. I, I don't know yet, but the hype is certainly palpable, and this pro, you know, the Baldur Gate project is gonna be. Like, you know, imagine uh, there's a light switch and on one end you have Baldur's Gate and you flick it off and you have Redfall. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's yeah. like, you know, maybe the comparable sizes, AAA development, uh, just sometimes, sometimes it's just, I think the more people you have involved, the more risk there is. You know, I, I think as a consumer, you're just like, product should be good, but they're making a souffle and sometimes you fuck up the souffle, it seems. And it's just, it's a five year long souffle. <laughs> that's <fine>. yeah <laughs> i think that's the game industry in a nutshell but anyways battle bit looks awesome uh it does I, i'm it gonna does try and very, check very it out cool. but uh, i'm happy to see that they've made i'm happy for indie developers when they when they hit it big it's just the same with the vampire survivors guy and same with these guys good job um another little thing to share with you uh don't you probably already heard it but uh, we can talk about it red dead redemption remastered pretty much leaked because of a korean rating board um do you, have you played red dead redemption any desire to revisit the I, world of i Earth? love red dead redemption uh i really do um i think it's i'm curious what it will be right because the the follow-up red dead redemption 2 was um it's a very different kind of game like similar but different like the original Red Dead Redemption was less of a like a life out in the West, uh, you know, thing. It was that was the biggest shift to two was it was more like no, you're living in that world and it's not always exciting and it's not always glamorous. Re the original Red Dead Redemption was a little more action oriented, a um, little bit more mission based, and I I love it. It's one of my favorite video game stories. Um, better than that I've so ever what played. one is better than two you think uh i don't know i never finished two um, uh two well, was kind of says something maybe i don't know like two you're a finisher two was really big i am but like you know it it was a really big game and it, it, yeah. at no point did i ever dislike my time with two but there were definitely points where it was like okay i'm gonna go do other things um, and it was always that game that I'd go back to, but then it's like, ah, but I'm in the middle of this really long game. It's a hard game to put down and pick back up again, I think. Mm. And it's a very long game and it's not always a fast paced game, which as we talked about with Final Fantasy, that's fine with me. I'm, it doesn't have to be all the time, but I do get in that mindset of if I'm going to go back to it, I need to start over. Oh no, I'm looking at 30 hours of really slow buildup that I already played to get to the stuff that i haven't do i want to do that that's my the witcher um, 3 problem yeah actually that's a great example witcher like 3 100 hours nominal game and i'm not finished the main campaign and uh, do i start over because it's been four years <laughs> i'm just like uh, you know i kind of want to start over but also i don't so remaster though any interest in this because they're just going to use the rdr2 engine like you I got it, you know, because there's enough time between both games. I got to think it's, you know, do you want horse balls? <laughs> yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think yeah. I do. Might um, be a good excuse for me to get into the franchise too. And see people well. already quoting the Tenacious D song and bless you. It's not a game at all. It's like Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. that's right. That's 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 <laughs> in the video game song that they did. Yeah. 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 No, it's a, um, it's a it's a it's a high it's it's definitely one of the ones that's in like best of all time games the RDR franchise. It's just got a really fulfilling complete story that like was really like it just landed on every front for me. Like mm. all the beats of that story really worked. Um and it has a very powerful ending. Uh, I just love. I just loved it. It's it's good. I'll buy it. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. All right. I sweet. actually, uh, <laughs> I actually was gonna try and play Red Dead Two recently, and I've got this awful, like, weird bug where my Rockstar account is that I own things in yeah. is tied to a different account from my Steam account, and like they don't communicate back and forth, so I can't play any games that are rockstar games through steam oh it's like linked to the wrong account and i can't unlink them it 
it is Final Fantasy 14 levels of like, what the hell is going on with the account linking on this thing? It's awful. I hate it. And uh, I, I don't think they're incentivized to fix it because I think they're like, well, we'd rather you just play through the Rockstar launcher anyway. Um, so there's no easy solution that I was able to find. So I, that's why I didn't play it uh, anymore, but mm, I have been itching to get that back. That sounds shitty. That yeah. sounds shitty. Well, they need to fix that. All right, moving along. Uh, mag on the Magic the Gathering side of news, John... Uh, yeah. I know you're not, you know, we're not really players, but we always check in with what's going on with Magic. <laughs> there, <laughs> there was an interesting, uh, interesting, you know, Lord of the Rings set. I don't know if you heard of this, but I, I don't know. I, uh, I don't know if they did it like rarities with all the rings, but certainly the one ring they printed a singleton copy of in all the set. And that singleton copy was found uh, mm. by someone in Whitby, Ontario. So it was a Quebec, it was a, not a Quebec, or not, you know, Canadian, I meant to say. Yeah. I got it. Uh, but one of the things, I just thought this article was interesting. I think they're wrong about some of the information in it, although I, I'm not entirely sure. But because, you know, capital gains tax is so high and income tax is so high in Canada, they'd be giving away at least, uh, you know, it's valued at $2 million, So they'd be giving away at least like uh, 500000 in, trans in sales transaction, apparently, Jeez. if not over half. And, you know, I guess that seems newsworthy uh, for an American. I, I think your taxes are not quite as steep as ours. Because, <laughs> you know, we're a communist Yeah, but country. they get their money other ways, let me tell you. it's. Uh... Yeah, no, I know. But just, you know, it, I, I think it made a good headline. But I think the, the main thing is, like, kind of crazy that they just published, you know, a single card. Like I always yeah, find, I find magic kind of crazy. Even the pe people are willing to pay hundreds of dollars for cards. Cause like, you know, they like fakes are available, right? Like good fakes. I mean, especially yeah. like I bought a few like Asian, I don't know, like from China, like it doesn't have the English text on it, but if you order them, and play them here they're legal as long as they're official but like you kind of gotta rip the card apart to tell if it has like you know inside the card it's got like a specific way it's made so you can you know but you can get gucci bags or you know knock off gucci bags in, in some places of the world right so i'm like gotta be there's ebay vendors vendoring not so original magic cards i wonder if we're gonna see a second one ring pop up somewhere in the world. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? It's a really like... funny idea to like yeah. a knockoff version of the ring. I like to imagine it in the context of Middle Earth, other people trying to pass off like, oh, it's the one ring. Yeah, That's I will it. say the artwork for the like I've been not a fan of a lot of their crossovers, even their mild ones. I would like even like Transformer one like I guess the joke ones are just whatever. It's fine. You know, because they're not legal sets, but like their D and D set looked pretty. Like the artwork's cool. I haven't been played. I haven't played in it, so I can't comment on the gameplay. But definitely, the artwork for the Lord of the Rings has been like pretty solid. And yeah, um, I've been. I watched the first Hobbit movie. I'm gonna trigger a whole bunch of listeners right now in Bo likes movies that people don't like. Oh uh, no! World. But dude. I I watched the first Hobbit film again, uh, and I enjoyed myself. So post your complaints. Uh, at Scott Johnson on threads. Um. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, like I'm here's the thing. I can't actually be that bothered by that because I've never seen the Hobbit movies as intended. Mm. I've watched, I think three or four different fan edits where they've taken all three movies and edited them down to one. Oh, they've done that? Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, because like a lot of people with common sense knew that that shouldn't have been three movies and that it was going to be full of bullshit, and it 100% mm. was. So they, they, um, they so cut I out the barrels? I don't bit. know how bad Did they cut the out the original... Goblin King, like, uh, you know, Mario Kart racer <laughs> or whatever? Like, there's, there's a whole video game level in the Goblin uh, King where they're just, like, you know, platforming their way through the Goblin Town. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awesome. Um, uh, I think there's parts of that. I mean, you, there, unfortunately, there's not much they can do with some of the bullshit, like trying to turn the barrel riding into a dumb action scene. And stuff like that, like that. 
that stuff's going to be in there. So I have mm. seen stuff like that, but I don't know how egregious it is. Actually, I might have seen that. Yeah, oh, I think for, I might have seen the first. Just to rub it in further, I'm watching the extended version. So I get extra, Lord, extra man. conversation with Galadriel and Gandalf and all that stuff. Jesus. More Radagast. Oh that love, sounds terrible. I love Radagast the Brown. I just like Saruman's reaction. He's just like, you can't trust anything he says. He eats mushrooms or something, something like that. <laughs> like he's, he's just like, he's like, Gandalf, don't listen to that dude. He eats like too many mushrooms, man. I'm just, I don't know. There's, there's redeeming stuff to love in that movie. It's pretty good. I think. And yeah. I like, I've always liked, um, the Hobbit book for its simplicity. Like, uh, there's a time and place for all stories. Like, you know, it, there's not one answer to how stories need to be told. Um, but the reason that I've always liked The Hobbit is because it is a very basic, very simple to understand, like, not overly complicated adventure story. And, like, it kind of feels like the quintessential adventure story. Like, yeah. Unlikely hero, gonna be a burglar. You know, you. I feel like there's always really cool yeah. stories around and, the and the unlikely too. rogue. You know, character. He doesn't want to go on a quest. A, he wants to stay. Goes at home. on a quest, yeah. finds cool magical items, deals with a dragon, comes home. Like it just hits all the notes for me in a way that is simple, fun, and enjoyable. And so, as soon as you take simple, fun, and enjoyable and go, we're doing three movies and we're going to show how it ties into Lord of the Rings and throw in all this other bullshit, I'm just like, nope, that's not what I want. It's fine that it exists. It's fine that people like it. Um, but There's that absolute... that inherently removes what I like about The Hobbit. Yeah, but there, there's there's just so many redeeming things. There's an absolutely badass moment. You know when they're they're jumping from tree to tree, and then they're on the last tree, and the wolves have knocked the tree over, and they're hanging over this cliff. And they're all about to fall out of the tree because like the orc, I can't remember the orc's name, Azog or something like that, is like chasing the dwarves and the Hobbit. And finally, like the handsome hobbit, the uh, handsome dwarf, like th <laughs> yeah, the one that yeah. does a, Th Thorin, We didn't put any makeup on this Th one. Thorin, Th Th Thorin Oakenshield is like, I gotta stand and fight. And there's this epic shot where he stands up and he's balancing on the tree and coming down, but it's like very like World of Warcraft. Like he's just like. And the music's like, oh, it's like hitting a crescendo and he's walking down the tree. The tree's on fire, flames everywhere. And this dwarf is coming down to like face the music. And then he just gets owned. Like, you know, he's a dwarf. <laughs> he just gets absolutely flattened the first hit. But there's something so epic about that sequence that I just friggin' love. Um, that just that shot of him walking down the tree and everyone else is hanging out of the tree desperately uh, clinging on for a respite. Uh, for those birds to show up and save them but like i just i just i just love that that moment that movie i don't know those movies have like a lot of redeeming qualities even if i i can't agree it's like overly reliant on cg kids shenanigans that they put in there for sure but anyways i enjoyed that and uh i think the one ring is awesome good luck to that guy who put his card in a bank vault so oh. I, like that would be my number one go. worry. Like, what magic nerds, what unhinged magic nerds are coming to rob me if I tell the world I have the One Ring? Like, the <laughs> yeah. One Ring is also they're like, all gonna put on black cloaks and go up to Canada and just go after him. It'd be like even like uh, a be real like like, 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 Lord of the Rings. like incel Gollum is coming. Like, for the, somebody for the should ring. do a movie <laughs> about someone finding the One Ring card. And it is literally just a retelling of Lord of the Rings. Oh, like, kind of yes, like South Park did. Yes, like, it's yeah. kind of ripping off that South Park idea where they did the the porno movie that needed to be returned to the video store. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You could do <laughs> like one they with... kind of... It's the same principle, but I think it would be really good. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's, like, looking for the... Ri yeah, you're onto something there. I think... I think, yeah. I think probably you... you It'd have to be someone independent. I think you'd have to make jokes about like incels and stuff like that. You don't want to yeah. watch. You want like you want good good humor on that. I got a new <laughs> camera. Maybe I can make it. <laughs> maybe I'll make. There you go. Movie. Go be a filmmaker. Go be Bo. a filmmaker. It's your time. All right. Um, Last of Us Three leak. I don't, this was news to me. This might not actually be news, but I was like, hey, they're making Last of Us Three. John likes that franchise did you hear about this <laughs> i didn't hear about it i've been like kind of looking to see like you know what's going on and you know i think 
anytime somebody says here's a leak take it with a grain of salt because there have also been rumors that uh, Naughty Dog halted a project that they were working on no word if it was Last of Us or something else so mm. uh, you never really know for sure but I think it was probably a given that they were going to do a Last of Us Part 3 I don't think Last of Us Part 2 ended uh, in a way that was so clear cut that you go, yeah, this is the end of the story forever. I actually think Last of Us Part 1 ended more clear cut than 2. So I would be surprised if they didn't go back to it. But according to what Eurogamer says, it looks like um, it looks like while it might tie into some of the events following Last of Us Part 2, it might be focusing on new characters. And... Uh, I'm all for it. Like, I know there are a lot of people that dislike Last of Us Part Two. I'm not one of them. I thought that from a gameplay perspective, it was a significant improvement over one. And narratively, uh, while not as strong, I still loved the story. So I'm all for playing more until I'm not. And right now, I'm I'd be happy to jump yeah, back. They'd, into they'd that be universe. foolish not to do another entry. Just with the TV show being a massive hit, and yeah, and all like, come on, come on now. Come on. I think that's going to be the weirdest disconnect: is the rules between the TV show and the game are very different, and you have to know that you're going to get people that saw the show that are now interested in the game. I guess you know if they played the first two, they already know the differences in the rules. I don't think you change anything, but I am curious. You know, like. You go from the TV show and the way it's set up to now playing the video game, like there's very different rules. There's very different ways things work between the two of them. And uh, I wonder what that's like for people going in the other direction. Yeah, maybe I'll get around to playing this at some point. Maybe. Just maybe. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, that can be one of your games if you ever get a PS5. Yeah, I got to play all the Yakuza's mm -hmm. first, probably, but yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, all right so that's the last of us three and that uh, concludes uh the news items so now we're gonna move into emails or yeah emails <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> that's the sound for emails that should be the sound file it should be you going emails wait <laughs> emails <laughs> i couldn't even get finish a syllable without stopping to correct all right so i'm gonna read an email john and you're gonna try to pay okay. attention hopefully I'm, it's not too boring um scott oh it's addressed to scott i'm glad i asked scott for some emails and he sent one address to him not to one of yep. us but anyways yeah, i hope what if it's a question <laughs> just for him scott what are yours well and yeah only your all thoughts right on... let, let, let's find out all right so one second so scott i really enjoyed your discussion last week regarding streaming services and didn't think it was off topic at all there are a lot okay, of us because this week we talked about social media. Yeah, yeah. There are <laughs> right. Well, it's where we share gaming gamer moments. There are a lot of us casual gamers who don't necessarily have the time to do a deep dive into the games we'd like to and enjoy watching people play games on streams as a way to butter that cheese, as you might say. <laughs> That's a, I think it's a Scottism. Do, wait, do you butter cheese? You're you're the cheese expert. Because you make cheese crisps. All right, we'll figure that out later. I will say that listening yeah. to you three discuss games has really increased my motivation to play more games. I do find that I'm hitting a wall with my current computer setup. I know Bo mentioned building a new comp a while ago and was wondering if he posted his parts list anywhere. It's been 15 years uh, since I built a new computer. I'm looking for information. Frank Worley. All right, it's kind of addressed to Scott, but I feel like... But it's for you. But yeah, it's, it's for me. Email. Yeah, so good job, Scott. I'm sorry for the preemptive criticism. I was wrong. Um, but yeah, so I did build my own PC. Uh, what I did was, uh, first of all, um, their Linus Tech Tips has a pretty good video, how to build a computer A to Z. It's like an hour and a half long. Watch the whole thing. If you got a family, tell the family you're taking a night off from them. <laughs> Lock yourself in a dark room. Watch the video. <laughs> Study it. Learn it. And then anything you have questions about, go learn deeper. Uh, my parts list is available on my Twitch page. Um, I guess for everyone's benefit, I can quickly run through it. Although I'm going to try to be quick about it. It's like I basically, you know, should I do that, John? Is that wise? That's up to you. You yeah. rattle it off quick. I'm looking at it. I think I can I'm rattle on it off the Twitch quick. page right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So just, I have uh, I have an i7 uh, 12th generation i7 Intel Core, uh, the 1270K which I think the K means it's possibly overclockable because 
I'm in the fiction that I'm going to do overclocking, even though it's not necessary. And also, you always tell yourself that the new C, but the new CPUs are so insane. Like it's also just not necessary. They have these things called E cores as well as regular cores that E shit, <laughs> that, that, whatever it means. It processes instructions that much more efficiently. Um, I the motherboard I got, so I went with DDR4 RAM. DDR5 is probably the new standard, but DDR4 still has a pretty long lifespan left. It's also a lot more affordable. I was able to get more RAM because I wanted overkill on RAM to do video editing. Might not be what you need, uh, but I got an Aorus Elite AX DDR4. Um, so that was compatible with my 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury CL16, 3200 megahertz RAM. And that's because RAM at the time I bought it was crazy expensive. DDR5 may still be expensive. So it just depends. That's a trade-off decision you'll have to make um when you're thinking about motherboard and ram um if you 16 gigs will probably suit you just fine and maybe you can go with ddr5 and 16 gigs um depends on your your overall uses as a content creator i wanted a powerful pc um two terabytes nvme gen 4 so hard disks are no longer hard disks they're basically little chips you just step into the motherboard so just uh, think NVMe is what you want as uh, two terabytes, as much space as possible for the modern gamer. You're looking at about 300 bucks there. I got a Noctua air cooler. I don't have liquid cooling because, and I love that Linus Tech Tips uh, is also super against liquid cooling. He loves the Noctuas and they're e way easier to install. It's like a jet engine. You'll need a really big case, which is why I have the Leon Lee Land Cool something or other. I forget the model. Just look for large ATX cases. Um, I have a GeForce 3060. I mean, graphics cards are commonly discussed, so I feel like that's not too complicated. I would love to get something better, but they were still expensive at the time I bought them. I think they might still be, there was no 4000 series. And I got a thousand watt EVGA PSU. That's pretty much it, man. And then you just plug all that shit in and then it works. And then I bought a monitor <laughs> later. Yo. Yeah. But like watch the Linus Tech Tips video and then just keep researching parts. Maybe those aren't the parts you want. I, I like spent a long time with the new camera I bought looking at Canon, I think it's like R50 and there's a Sony, Sony a6100 of the popular content creators at, at like a, an affordable, like an entry point camera range for mirrorless, which is like 800 to 900 Canadian. Um, I randomly stumbled on the Nikon because of a sale that brought it from a thousand to the $900 range, still a little higher, but like, you know, and then I'm like, okay, I need to watch like 15 YouTube videos of detractors and positives. That's why I'm a big proponent of YouTube. As soon as I decide I'm going to build something, like I'm not pulling this shit out of my ass. I'm like watching and studying. But again, I'm 40 and single and have very little in the way of, <laughs> very little in the way of like family responsibilities that prevent me. You know, I don't have a, a, someone who and I'm like, listen, I cannot spend time or do anything you want me to do because the next five hours I'm watching tech videos. This is important. <laughs> okay. So I don't know what to tell you. There's kind of no cheating if you want to build yourself. That's why people like to have pre-builts because they don't have time to do that. And that might be you too. So don't shy away from it, uh, that kind of thing if, if you really think it's uh, better for you. Um, yeah. Anything to add, John? I kind of no. kind of one-manned it. No. But okay. I, uh, I have built my own PCs in the past. I haven't for the past two um, for much of the reasons you said. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not, it, it's intimidating, but it's not that hard. Yeah, and uh, if you are building your own PC, use um, PC Part Picker. And then, like, you, you know, research things, learn learn the terms. If you if you are going down that route, real, recognize it's, like, part hobbyist, so you have to want to enjoy doing it. Don't just go in and inspect. I'll get a good deal just because I'm deciding to go this way because you will have some work to do. Okay, next, uh, texts. I don't have a text. Uh, hey, core crew, love the show. This question is for Bo. Sorry, John. <laughs> My wife and I are... Well, it's weird it's for me, but it's about frog wrestling. My wife and I are huge fans of frog wrestling. After watching the latest free preview... My lovely wife noticed Bo is wearing a black VR headset and is wondering if Bo feels his wrestler has more power in his traditional white headset or with his black headset. Keep up the good work. Frog wrestling is stupidly entertaining. Anon listener. Uh, well, there, this is a this is a dicey question. I think it is true. Uh, I, I, I really gave do you not for want an alternate costume. I gave you a black headset. So yeah, that, that I is, mean, that's a good notice and a good observation, and I like that somebody saw. It. So headsets only come in two colors, right? You got the white ones, like the Quest, 
mostly. Yep. And then you got the black ones, like the Index and the Vive and stuff. I kind of don't want to attribute pros and cons to things that are white and black, lest uh, these kinds of analyses <laughs> get taken out of context. You know uh-huh. what I mean? So I'm just nope. going to say all VR is good <laughs> VR. And, uh, you know, I'd be just as happy with a quest on my head as I would having an Apple, uh, whatever it's called, Apple you're, face. You're saying it was an aesthetic choice. It was not a power yeah, choice. Yeah, I think sometimes maybe it's more like, you know, the symbolism of, like, white and black in Chinese culture. I think it's not all Asian cultures, but I think it's Chinese. Maybe it's Jap- maybe Japanese. White is the color of evil. Like, if they made Star Wars, Darth Vader be all white. <laughs> right like that's the color of evil um so it really is like an american you know black being more badass is a very an american like centric idea i guess or western world idea um the idea of an all-white darth vader has lived with me for a long time because there was a a comic book series called star wars infinities where basically they would take uh the star wars story they would change one detail And then show how the story would have been different if one thing had gone differently. So, like, there's one where uh, Luke dies on Hoth. Like, he dies of his wounds and freezes to death. Right. Um, And it's kind of a story about, you know, like, Leia taking up the mantle and stuff like that. And I don't remember which one it is, but there is one where Darth Vader, much like he does in Return of the Jedi, turns on the Emperor, but he does not die from his wounds. And you now have... The Dark Lord of the Sith, uh, mm. he's now a good guy, and he wears the same, and he, when he shows up at the end, he's still dressed as Darth Vader, but he's in all all white instead of oh. all black. Oh, so and I always it, thought that was the weirdest thing in the world to me when I saw it. It was so bizarre. It's just kind of lived in my in my head rent-free. So there's a depiction the of I that, saw that, white Darth yeah. Vader. Yeah, it's really weird. It's from this comic book. He's just storming oh, there's in. There's even a toy. I'm seeing a toy here. Huh. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it definitely, for me, it, it doesn't It looks hit. extraordinarily wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I just look yeah. at it and I'm like, somebody didn't color in their coloring book. Not yeah, right. Not, not a fan. Not a fan of White Darth Vader, for sure. But, uh, yeah, um, I, I don't, John runs the storylines. He's the genius, I feel like the main event main takeaway here is like i told him earlier in the show he created a whole concept for wrestler that doesn't exist that like wwe could easily just like like someone there could just run it right now like they're the tech billionaires are like people were talking about mark zuckerberg and elon musk doing some stupid celebrity boxing match like talk about like first of all dumb but people like that kind of thing so like you could you could take all that thematically fits into like a cheesy tech billionaire vr headset wearing thing and if that happens they will have ripped off john they should pay john royalties is what i'm saying yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's no difference all v as uh as i said earlier because omega 9 reminded me he said wait did he just say all vrs matter yeah all vrs matter that's hashtag all vrs matter <laughs> It's not the uh, no-no when you're talking about VR headsets. Um, it, it doesn't matter how much screen door effect. It doesn't matter how pukey you get. All VRs are equally important in my eyes. All right. I think that answers that. Yep. And I think that uh, we're pretty much, John, we made it. And we might have we even clocked in two and a half to three hours on the show. So mm-hmm. I thought it was going to go quick. But you know what? <laughs> I think that's like you know trying to trying to say the sky is green i think determined that it's not just one of us that's the problem yeah it's all of us we'll see we'll see next week what happens if if john if scott and i clock in clock in early then we'll be having a conversation with you the week after we'll be like listen no but uh one sample size is also not definitive too because sometimes we do short shows i think i think we've clocked in a short one every now and then but uh, all right, I'm going to do the end of show business uh, here. Uh, so if you enjoy the show, we remain commercial free, ad free, giving you the free business every week, putting the content out there for everyone. But uh, 
you know, you can support us. And we have uh, over 700 generous producers who support the show, um, all for really inexpensive, less than a cost of a cup of coffee now in 2023. In fact, with inflation, there's never been a cheaper time to be a supporter of the show than in 2023, honestly. Like, if you think about it that way, you're getting the best deal today if you sign up today. Just, just like, uh, smoke that in your pipe wait that's aggressive <laughs> smoke that in your pipe <laughs> smoke that in I mean, your pipe patrons. give that, give that con- some consideration but uh yeah wow. wonderful generous uh, producers have um enabled us to uh pay our bills bring you this content and we often tease like it's particularly me because um i would like to do some other content but as you know i work full-time job i just can announce here this week it's formally official i end work mid-october Wow. So, you know, notice has been handed in. It's public information at this point. I'm probably going to take some time off and not just jump right into things, but I am leaving the daytime job in October. So, and I can talk about it publicly because everyone on my team knows and there's no surprises or anything like that. I'm scared out of my mind. So one way to help me be less scared is to support us on Patreon if you're listening to the show. There's some of you (laughs) who've been listening for years. You know, it's very inexpensive and it's very much appreciated. And unlike, you know, a Twitch sub where half of it goes, you know, Patreon takes a modest amount. PayPal will take a modest amount transferring it. Uh, Most of it goes to your creators and it means a lot to us. And uh, it it will help fuel with all the additional time I'll have additional projects of some kind. I want to do more. Otherwise, I just stay at my job and keep this. It's very, if you have a full time job and we're making what we're making, it's like very good beer money. And, you know, that, that, that would be a good strategy. But I have a, personally have a strong desire to do more. So we'll see. Nope, no promises. But, anyways, I can share that. So we have some new patrons this week. Uh, John, it's Mr. GB. Nice. Yeah. I feel like it's like, you know, somebody more uh, senior, like a, you know. Mr. Garth Brooks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe it's Garth Brooks. Gar- Garth is a pretty cool guy, actually, I think. I can't remember what we were talking about when we were kind of impressed with him in a conversation recently. Just because I don't listen to country, so I'm like, Garth Brooks. Ugh. But then he did He's something. He's narrating cool. a show I was watching on Disney Plus one night. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah he was just talking about parks. National parks. You never know what you'll get up to. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Garth Brooks talking about the Grand Canyon. Uh, Helping me sleep. That's what he was doing. Thanks, thanks, Garth Brooks. For talking yeah, about the thanks, Grand Garth, Canyon for the sub. So I could sleep. If you're not Garth, though, just, just Mr. GB, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Robert S. also subbed. And uh, Icarus. 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 It looks like Icarus, Icarus, but with a V somewhere that's uncomfortable. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is an Icarus that didn't fly too close to the sun. Yeah, this it, is an Icarus that Icarus. was uh, I like more practical. V. I like the V. It works. Yeah, yeah. But just again, thank you very much for your patronage. Uh, we appreciate that you join, and we encourage folks to join up. It's very expensive, especially a long term folks. You get free pre show uh, content every week. I think there's art that goes out for some of our other member benefits, and uh, with free time on my part comes also a desire to start seriously organizing some core events. Whether we're just going to hang out in VR chat, raid Hogger, or do something, I like to just you know. I'd like to get some events in and give you some other content for that. So that's coming to uh, in a few months. Um, that is patreon.com slash core show. Finally, you can find the show. If you happen not to know where our website is at frogpants.com slash core, you can email us your thoughts uh, <laughs> about games, just games though. Not about other things. I talk to the core at gmail.com. And you can send texts to 801-471-0462 and we'll read them on the show. And we have a good yeah, time. That's the we get ten good hams line that way. right yeah. there. One eight hundred ten hams. And uh, finally, uh, on Twitter, you can get us. Uh, the show feed is at CorePod. Uh, it's at John underscore Jagger at Scott Johnson and at Bo Schwartz. And we're also on Thread, but the names are slightly different, so I'm just not going to say <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. Good okay. luck finding them, but I'm sure you'll find them. Uh, type I, Bo Schwartz and John Jagger. Look for it. I'm sure the just search algorithm you'll yeah. find us. This week's episode was streamed on Twitch uh, on my channel, but it's usually streamed on YouTube at Scott Johnson uh, on the YouTubes there. So that's normally you find the live show. And I think that about covers it, right? Is there anything else we need to talk about? 
Uh, old grandma reads oh, the game. Oh, old grandma. Yeah, 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 yeah. I almost forgot. Not that there's a lot of different this week. No, but... no, no. That's really important, though. I absolutely f can't forget uh, fast grandma. Well, assuming you, uh, you haven't been listening for a couple weeks, you might not know what they've played. But let me tell you, the games haven't changed all that much. Bo played Diablo 4. John played Final Fantasy. And he played WWE 2K23. That's it. Scott wasn't here, so we're not talking about games, apparently. Yeah. These guys just played the same things. <laughs> it wasn't a very long list, I guess. This no, <laughs> no, it turns out. Well, you're in, well, you're, look, we're you're both deep in, in our the middle games. of yeah. a big marathon. I'm in the middle of a marathon. Like, it's, Final it's Fantasy's true. not a short game. It's long. I'm yeah. almost done with it. Yeah, and we'll, well. yeah we'll play more. Yeah, all right, so pretend the music's coming up, guys. I'm, like, desperately looking forward to try and maybe play something, but it's just not happening. I have no idea where it is. Uh, I prepared as much as I could. So this will be the end of the show this week. Catch us next week. Again, John is out next week. It'll be me and Scott. And then after that, I think we'll be back to the normals. Um, so get at us there. Um, any parting words of wisdom, John? No. <laughs> <laughs>